What up, everybody? Welcome to the Dry Wipe Chronicles. I'm the host, Rocky G Inks. You can find me on Instagram at Rocky G underscore Inks. And the Dry Wipe Chronicles, the way it sounds, I'm here with my boy, my dog, Julius Cordero. Um, he's the owner of the gallery where I currently tattoo at. And I uh, brought him on the podcast because I wanted to share with you uh, his story, his background, and kind of what he's done in his life. Kind of a, a really huge inspiration to me. So this is another guy I really wanted to bring on the podcast. And so now that he's here, I have him uh, go ahead and introduce himself. Thank you, my boy. Um, yeah, my name is Julius Cordero. Uh, my IG handle is Julius J U L I U S underscore Cordero, C O R D E R O. And uh, yeah, let's get this thing going for sure. I'm super excited to be here, dog. It's gonna be dope. So we uh, we're here in downtown Los Angeles. He's the owner of the gallery. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about it by now. If you haven't, it's at the gallery DTLA. It's in my bio. It's in Julius's bio. Um, you've had the gallery now for how long, bro? Uh, we've been here for about three years now, going on four years. Nice. Um, yeah. And uh, it'll be the fourth year coming in October. And how long have you been tattooing? I've been tattooing now for about like 11 years now. Um, 11 years, but I'd say about like seven years professionally, you know, um, when I really started like focusing on it and shit like that. Focusing on the art. Yeah, just like straight tattooing, you know, and shit like that. And what, what made you want to open up uh, a studio, but not only just a studio, but a penthouse studio? What made you want to gear towards opening up something like this? Well, the whole penthouse thing kind of just came on its own accord, you know? Like, I never thought of opening the penthouse. Like, that was never even my fucking, you know, like, in my mind or anything like that. But um, opening up a studio, for sure, um, there are a lot of things that brought me to opening up a studio. I mean, you know, just getting into the tattoo industry at first, especially back then, dog, you know? Like, we didn't have, like, YouTube and, like, IG and shit like that, you know? So you, I kind of just kind of uh, started in, like, different shops, like, walk-in shops and shit. And a lot of these shops, um, I don't know, dog, they're kind of like um, not inviting, you know? <laughs> right, 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 and, right, right. Uh, so what made me want to open up my own shop is to have a tattoo studio where I feel comfortable, where the artists here will feel comfortable. And, you know, just like to have a good environment like that, because I feel like you kind of don't see shit like that too often. Yeah. You know? So that's what definitely made me want to open up my own studio, just to be somewhere where I fucking feel super comfortable tattooing at next to fucking artists that I fuck with. Okay, and and you started it back when? In 2020, you said three years ago, 2021? Or? Yeah, 2020, 2021, right yeah. about when COVID hit. Exactly when COVID hit, actually, the year of COVID hit. So it'd be 2020, 2023? Yeah, 2021. 20, it was 2024. So 2020. No, I was, I was just talking about When, when was COVID? I think, I think COVID was 2020. So it was October 2020. Okay. That's when I opened up the gallery. And you opened it by, you just by yourself, like you was, you were the only artist here working or? Yeah, so when I opened it, um, yeah, for sure, I was the only artist. I mean, it was just like fucking, it was serendipitous, honestly, it was fucking crazy. But yeah, it was just me, myself, you know, I had nobody here with me or anything like that. <clears throat> but everything worked out very, um, very smooth, you know, just because I heard of this building when I first started tattooing. When I first started tattooing and I first got into a, a private studio, it was yeah. here in downtown LA, right here on, on 6th and Spring. Oh, right here by, uh, like, one block Right by over. the last bookstore. Yeah, 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 yeah. You showed me that last time. Yeah, so that was my first studio. So I remember um, one of my homegirls, she was tattooing here in this building. In this building? In this building. Oh, shit. Um, with some fool named um, Corey Devine. He does a lot of, like, geometric. Like, he tattoos, tattoos here, too? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's he right. Yeah, 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 like that. But anyway, I remember years ago, it was probably, like, six years ago, um, seven years ago, I seen her tattooing here, and I remember this was, at that time, this was the only building that had um like balconies and shit like that you and love I you love marble. balconies bro i mean you know and i'm scared of heights too Doug, so it's kind of like crazy <laughs> right but um guys hold on we yeah so <laughs> yeah we tattooed at a penthouse on the 20th floor and he's terrified of heights yeah, i'm terrified i tried locking him out of the balcony no, and fuck no. yeah he was, was an earthquake here the other day yeah i know it was cool you you, you came this fool came downstairs was like Ugh. Did you guys feel that? He's yeah. like, I'm ready to go home. I was like, yeah, I was what? Ready, I was ready to go home, <laughs> Oh, my. But the lights were shaking. I was, like, looking up, like, wow. Because yeah. I never experienced an earthquake. This was, like, two weeks ago. And you came down. I, I, I will not forget. I've never seen you so scared. You were, like, you came down, like, Damn, do I you just guys look, feel that? I'm ready to go home. up right here, you know? And, like, <laughs> fuck, like fuck that, you know? Why, but anyways, yeah. But, so watch my stairs down. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so back in 2020, October 2020, when COVID hit, um... Yeah, I had the opportunity to, I had saved a lot of money that year. and Because um, of COVID, right? Because of COVID, yeah, yeah. You know, people weren't going out. They weren't yeah. spending their money and shit. So um, 
yeah, tattooing was just booming for a lot of people, I feel, you know, and um, I've never, like, I've never saved that kind of money ever in my life. I've never accumulated that kind of money, and I figured, um, I think it'd be a great year to take know a chance with opening my own studio and shit like that just because i was tired of going through other studios too dog because like yeah. even when i had regular jobs before i tattooed and i was at other studios i don't think i've ever stayed at a studio longer than like a year or something like that yeah i think it just again right it just pertains to like just fucking different artists and how fucking some owners of those studios kind of act you know and how they think highly of themselves or i don't know they're just too much of something you know so i, I don't right. know i kind of just never found like a studio where i felt super comfortable with and, um, yeah, that year was a really, like, beautiful and blessing year for me. I, I was able to save up money, and I felt it was just time for me to kind of take a chance on myself and, you know, right. fucking do my own shit. And now, you know, in retrospect, looking back, like, do you think you made the right choice? Yeah, 100%. No, of yeah. course. Yeah, you know, and obviously every day, like, every month, you know, like, you know, I don't know how every year is going to go from you and shit like that, but, you know, definitely it's, like, it's very beautiful to have the team that we have, you know, and... I say we have, not that I have, you know, yeah, like, yeah, right. I'm very blessed to have you foods next to me, everyone who tattoos here next to me, you know, and I, I truly mean that just because again, right, like, I feel like it's very rare to find like, people who truly love what they do and for them to for people to want to be around like me, us, and, um, and to tattoo with us that are very passionate about their art. Um, right. I think that's just a blessing. <coughs> and it's really important, you know? I mean, there are a lot of blessings in between all that shit, but yeah, it's just fucking, I fuck with the heavy for sure. So now seeing where the gallery has come in the past three years, are you, are you satisfied? Are you happy with, with the team you have now? Do you feel like this is, this is what you visioned three years ago or four years ago? Um, when I first opened the gallery, I didn't even envision any of this dog for real, to be honest with you. Like I didn't think of having a team, you know, like a lot of this like whole, like the way our team works and the way like the gallery works now, like a lot of it is because of you too, dog, you know, obviously like you come from a business background and I've learned a lot from you. And I think it's important to be open to learning from anyone you meet, no matter how long you think you've been in an industry for, no matter how long you've been tattooing for, there's always something to learn, you know? And so I'm very grateful to have you dog, to have like the team and shit. And, um, but anyway, anyway, I never thought of having a team like this. I never, I don't know. I just didn't think about shit like that. I really just, just taking it day by day and, um, it was just me by myself and I was content with that. You know, I was just super stoked that I was able to open it by myself and I wasn't worrying about the future too much. I was just taking it day by day and just like tattooing at a penthouse how, yeah. and seeing how it went. Mm-hmm. And honestly, the penthouse wasn't even like a, like an idea for me, honestly. Like I didn't think of opening up a penthouse, but I remember I checked out a couple buildings here in downtown and, um, I remember just this building came back to my mind when I first started tattooing here a couple years ago. And I don't know. I, I don't know why I asked about a penthouse, but. I guess because I had the money well, saved. Well, I mean, it's cool, yeah. And then, uh, so when I came up, dog, you know, I just followed the stairs and shit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And, like, the, the marble, marble floors. floors. Yeah. Yeah, 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 And the pricing was right, bro, and I just took the chance, and I fucking ran with it, bro, so, you know? And that's and that's what I think what life is about, right? Taking the chance, like, taking the risk, right? Because I'm pretty sure for you, it was monumental. Like, even though you had money saved up, right, you're thinking to yourself, like, all right, cool. Like, I'm tattooing at this place. I'm not really growing, or wherever the case you were before tattooing, you weren't happy. But you decided to say, you know what, fuck that. I'm going to bet on myself. And you fucking bet on yourself, man. And now look, look what's happened. After. Look, look what's come to fruition since you've bet it on yourself, right? And I don't think people enough do that. I, I think people are so scared to bet on themselves. And that's the difference between winners and losers, right? Winners will bet on themselves nine, like 10 times out of 10. You know, they will always do what they feel like. You know what? It's scary, but I'm going to do it anyways. And that's what you did, right? You, you were probably very scared, even though you had the money saved up, but you're still scared because you're going to open up your new studio. You're on your own. You don't really know what's going to ha- what's gonna happen. You're taking it day by day and three years four years later bro i mean it's 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 growing into what it's grown into you know the gallery has this platform there's a lot of artists coming in in and out guest spotting so it's definitely something to be proud of you know and, and taking that step like you did yeah no for sure bro like um i'm super blessed how everything like came about and how it's still going you know um but a lot like a lot of this like new stuff coming in you know it has a lot to do with, like, the team, right? Yeah, of and, course. Um, Everybody here. Yeah. yeah. and um, But, yeah, when I first came in, bro, I fucking wasted. I didn't waste. I spent and invested a lot of my money into the gallery or to the point where I think where I only had, like, $2,000 left or something like nice. that. But, yeah, you're right. I think you should take a chance, you know? And, yeah, absolutely. And take the chance if you truly believe in what you want, you know, and if you truly love what you do. I mean, it'd be dumb to take a chance on some shit that you truly don't believe that you're going to, I don't know, spend your life on or dedicate yourself yeah. on, you know, so. But yeah, dog, I'm super glad I made that choice. And it worked out because, yeah, it was, I've never been so busy that year. I, you know, that was the busiest year I've ever had, you know, and a lot of things were just going right. So I thought it was a perfect time to, you know, take the chance on myself and shit. So it worked out very good. 
So now with knowing where you are now, let's talk about when you started. How did you first start tattooing? Let's talk about that. Now that everybody knows who you are and you have this gallery, let's let's let the people know and get them an idea of, you know, just because you guys see Julius on Instagram and he's the owner of a penthouse and he has all this stuff, doesn't mean that it all just came like that in an instant. You know, it takes fucking time to build. You heard him, he's been tattooing for 11 years, but maybe... Like seven years professionally, For seven years you know? professionally, yeah, right? Was, yeah. So with all that being said, now you guys know what he has. Let's talk about how he got there, right? So... Let's talk about from the beginning. How did it go from this? Let's, let's go seven years ago. How did that happen? Or you can go 11 years if you want. All right, I mean, I don't know. Okay, so if we go back. Yeah, let's just say we go back like 11 years. Like when I was like 19 or some shit like that. Um, I got introduced into tattooing. I mean, I, I knew they exist and shit. You know, like my homies would get tattooed and stuff like that. But I never like really, I don't know, seen it as like a career choice or some shit like that. You know, I never thought, I never knew what tattooing could do to, to like someone's life, you know? Um, but then again, back then, dog, there was only like fucking MySpace, I think, or yeah, some shit yeah, like that, yeah, right? Yeah. So there wasn't even Maybe, Facebook. Maybe, yeah. Or, yeah <laughs> that. I mean, no, there was for sure MySpace. But, but yeah. you know, like there wasn't anything out as informational as it is today, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, so for sure. if you did, I think like the only dudes that I knew of were like Carlos Torres and Nico Hurtado, and you know, and that was through MySpace still. But even then, they didn't post too many videos on like YouTube yeah. or shit like that, you know? So yeah. you didn't have so much informational videos or things like that. But um, anyway. I got into it through a friend of mine. His name is Lewis, and he, we know we're traviesos and shit. And uh, I remember one day he went to juvie um, for doing just some stupid shit. And he came out, and they showed him how to make, like, homemade tattoo machines, you know, with, like, CD players, uh, motors from CD players and um, big pins and shit like that, you know, guitar strings for needles and stuff like yeah. that. And so I remember when he came out, he was teaching me all this stuff. And so I think that's when I first really got, like, I don't know, really thought about tattooing and, like, what it was and, I guess... I don't know, just more deep into it, I guess, into, like, that whole, like, starting to get, like, into machines, you know? And even those weren't legit machines, right? Those right. were like homemade machines. But anyway. Well, yeah, big pan guitar string, battery yeah. from, motor from a CD player. Yeah. And then, uh, so, I would make homemade tattoos, homemade tattoo machines with him, and uh, we would tattoo each other and shit. But I would tattoo him more so just because, like, I don't know. I don't know, he would just fucking be with it, you know? And <laughs> yeah, I'd rather yeah. cut that with it. Oh, yeah, with the cut yourself. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. I have enough fucked up he, tattoos. He didn't draw anything like that. He just, like gang banged and like tagged and shit like that you know right, like, right, but right, not right. even like not even like good graffiti tagging you know just like that total fucking right you know right, I'm right, not saying right, like right. that's bad no it's like shit, his own hand style it's own, it's own yeah, hand style no yeah for sure but um so I would be tattooing for a minute and I, and I remember one day he had bought like a like a fucking tattoo kit you know one of those like f you know those super inexpensive tattoo kits yeah yeah and uh, he had it, but he would never use it. And I remember in high school, I would draw a lot. I would always draw a lot. And uh, I have a really bad memory, but, <laughs> but you know, I've, I looked at books and shit from high school and shit, and I could see, like, that I did draw a lot, you know? And that's why I remember this shit, because I just seen, my, like, those fucking books. But um, after when I, saw, when I saw him have that tattoo kit, you know, he would never use it and stuff. Right. So um, I remember I traded him an iPod for it. I had an, an iPod that was, like, thick-ass. Like the little iPod shuffle iPod. or the, the, the big or The no, first gen, like, like that big-ass no, one. Not that first generation, not that fucking white one. That but big, yeah, you fat know, maybe one. after, like, around the shuffle. iPod it was, like, shuffle. Black, it was little, black yeah, and yeah. a silver back casing and shit. Yeah, yeah, a little iPod shuffle. Yeah, you exactly. traded an iPod shuffle for a tattoo machine? Yeah, it nice. was an iPod shuffle. Oh, it wasn't. Yeah, the iPod shuffles are those little square ones. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, right? Yeah, um, but not. It was just fucking iPod. All right, 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 right. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, no, nah, yeah. So um, I traded him an iPod, an iPod, yeah, for it, and um, so he gave me the machine, and I kind of started like tattooing on fake skin, you know. But then mm. again, like I still didn't know how to like apply anything. I right, didn't right. know any techniques or anything like that. Um, so again, I would just start tattooing this fool, and um, that's when I first kind of got introduced to like tattooing with the real machine, even though right. it was like a cheap ass machine or right. some shit. Still the real machine though. Yeah, right. for sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, through that, you know, I'd probably tattoo, like, fucking once every three months or something like that, right? Just because, I, I don't know, I wasn't promoting it or anything like that. I didn't know that I was going to be doing that shit. You know, I didn't know that I was going to be in, very, like, involved and invested in, right. in, in the future. But um, It was just for fun. Yeah, and that's so whatever homies I had, you know, every, like, three months or something. I tattooed Damn, now look too. at you. It's crazy. I know. I'm, fucking yeah. I'm just glad that, like, I don't know, I'm kind of glad that everything worked out the way it is, you know? And even throughout that process, you know, like, I still didn't know that I was going to be tattooing, right? It wasn't until, like, years later, I think when I was, like, till, like I was, like, 21, where I really started taking tattooing more seriously, like, in my mind, you know? And, um, right. But, um, yeah, so I remember after that, right, I don't know, that was, I had... 
kind of that in my mind. And then high school went by, and then I was working. Dude, I would work everything. I'd be in construction. I was a cook. Hey, you told me you had, like, all these fucking jobs. You were, like, a security guard. Yeah, I was a security. I did everything. I love that story. I love that story that you were were in your car, and you were just like. Yeah, I would be in the car, too, like, (laughs) you know, just fucking guarding a fucking parking lot, you know? And <laughs> Watching, like, whatever you were. like, YouTube or something like that, you know? And, like, but not even, like, pertaining to art. I was just, yeah, kind of, yeah. like, wasting my life, you know? Because I yeah. never, I was never I like that, like wasting that. your life. Let's just keep that in mind. Yeah, uh-huh. For sure, straight up. Yeah, I think about that shit a lot, you know? Like, how much time I wasted when I was, like, 21. That's why when I see, like, foods who are, like, 21, like, very young, and they come into the gallery, and they're at least asking to be, like... So at least be around us or something like that. I think that's, like, you're already ahead of the game because, like, I'm an introvert and I'm, I yes, know I didn't do shit are, like that yeah. when I was young. You know, it took me, it took a lot of courage for me and, and a lot of time for me to understand that, like, <laughs> if I do want to get somewhere in life, I need to, like, get out of my comfort zone. And, and there's, like, steps to everything to get where you <clears> want to be, you know? And um, so when I was a security guard and shit like that, that's, I was also reading a lot too. My, right. my sister put me on, like, a lot of books and shit like that that I thought were very, um, I don't know, like, life changing and shit for sure. Pertain to, like, following your dreams and stuff like that, you know? And, um, right. So around that time when I was a security guard, um, I was reading a lot of books. And then uh, so I, my mind started changing, right? And then uh, I think after I was a security guard, my last job was um, I was a production assistant for like a TV show. It was like a fucking Latino TV show in Culver City. And uh, I think I did like three seasons, of, three seasons <laughs> of that shit. I was a production assistant, which is like... I get somebody water if they want water. It's a fancy. I was like production assistant. Yeah, it is Damn. A fancy, I was it's like, a fancy. fuck. What did you do? Yeah. Like, fuck. Fuck. I got water for people. <laughs> no, what did, the fuck? I did I mean, whatever. You know, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, would yeah, mop yeah. or. But I like that be, production did, that was, assistant. It's like you're like the runt. You know, like you do fucking whatever. See, but I love that. See, you know, you, and that's so funny that you say that because. Right, like corporate jobs, like in fucking America or whatever, like they give you like this important title, right? Like production assistant. Oh my god, like I'm a production assistant, but you're doing all this bullshit work, you know? Yeah. Yeah, fuck all that. Yeah, fuck all that. I mean, yeah, it's a cool job or whatever, you know. But yeah, I mean, fuck all that. I mean, obviously, the best thing anyone would want is like free to be your own boss. You know, like why would you not want to be your own boss or work for yourself? You know, move yourself forward, but. So I was a production assistant for like three years, and um, the third year. Three years. I was there for, like, three seasons. So like I think 20. on the third season, I, I, you know, I finally decided, like, you know, like, it's either I'm going to keep being a production assistant and tattooing on the side uh-huh. and probably never get as good as I want to be. Right, right, right. Or quit, you know, and kind of, like, again, right, just, like, believe in myself. So this know? is, like, the age of 24, 25, right? Uh, I think when this was, I think it was, like, 20, oh, yeah, huh? Because yeah, you were 21, 24. Yeah, so I was, like, 24. 24, 25, yeah. And, um... And yeah, so uh, I remember that last season, the last season ended and shit, and uh, I had a choice to go back or not, but I decided not to, and um, and I just started tattooing from my house, you know? And I know So you, you quit production assistant entirely? Yeah, I quit it entirely. So you were production assistant for three years, and so you decided, fuck this, either I can be a production assistant and tattoo on the side, or be a tattoo artist full time? Yeah. So this is, at this point, 25-ish, you quit, and now you're a tattoo artist. Now I was trying to be a tattoo artist, oh, nice, yeah, you know, nice. like, well, because, you know, I was still tattooing from my house, right. you know, and shit like that. And I still didn't know if I was going to, because it's very hard. It's so hard to, like, quit your job, Bro, dog, and, oh like, and to want to, like, pursue your dream, right? Just because, like, <laughs> fuck, you know, the world doesn't stop for nobody, dog. Like, you just have to pay <clears throat> bills and shit, you know? And I, I just feel like I was very grateful to have, at this, it's, she's my girlfriend, name is Laura. I, I was so grateful to have her at that time, because at that point, at that time, she was going to school, and she had just, when I had decided to not be a in production anymore she yeah. had just graduated her nursing program so she definitely held me down a lot for with like paying bills and shit and i was just very blessed to have her in my life dog because again dog it's like the life the world isn't gonna stop for you right, and you for have sure, bills to pay sure. and shit and i just don't know how i would have done it because shit was slow for me too dog i think i was charging like 60 dollars an hour and even then like i'd be there for like eight hours and i'd probably make like i mean i guess that's still cool i guess but you know like 480 bucks i don't know dog but i wouldn't tattoo as consistently you know so yeah. like i had no job and so even if I made like I don't know, let's just say like three hundred bucks that day or something like that, that'd probably be like three hundred dollars for like two hey, weeks. Hey, but or you some know shit, what, bro? You know? Like, that's a lot of money. Like if you th- if you put it in like retrospect, I mean, t- at the age of twenty four, you were like what? That was like twenty twenty. I mean, it's not a lot of money when you're by yourself, 13, though. You know, like 14, yeah, you know, like, I had yeah. to pay like my own house, like every just every bill, you know. Right, so right, right, and right, again, right. like I'm sure it was stressful for her too, dog. You know, because. I mean, she was paying a lot of my bills, too, dog. You know, she yeah. was trying to help me out, too. She was, like, she bought me an iPad. She bought me an iMac. And I promised her that, you know, like, that I would put it to work and shit like that, you know. And But, yeah. So, after that, right, I think I was, again, right, like, I was just tattooing on my crib, you know, for a while. And 
I knew things had to change, right? And I knew I was an introvert too, and I knew I was like nervous to like talk to people or to right, ask right. for help and shit like that. But you know, with all the books that I was reading and stuff like that, I started like to get to anywhere you want to be. Feel like there's there are like steps, you know. And I feel like a lot of people maybe get discouraged or feel lost to be where they want to be because they see the whole thing as one big piece. But if you cut everything down step by step, I feel right, it'll course. help you. You create small feel, goals. But small, even, exactly right. Yeah. Create small goals yeah. and help you get there, you know, and, and it'll probably be less stressful for you too because they seem more attainable. Absolutely. So, for example, like you said, right, let's say if we have a goal for a year, like I want to attain this goal in a year, but it's very important to create like sub goals, right? Like, okay, this is the end goal. And to get to this, maybe I should break this big goal into like maybe some some sub goals because like, okay, I'll accomplish this in three months. And then, all right, cool. I was able to accomplish that. All right, the next three months, create another goal, then another goal, then in the grand scheme of things, you've accomplished that goal. At the That's end of exactly the day. right. Yeah. You know? And so I knew when I was tattooing for my house, like shit had to change for <clears throat> right. sure. So my goal was just to be at a tattoo studio, not a tattoo shop anymore. Because right. I, think, I think in between like, damn, I have a really fucking bad memory, but... In between when I was at... This is not sponsored by Burt's Bees, by the way. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, in between, in between um, you know, tattooing at my house, I remember I would tattoo at some tattoo shops. I think there was this one shop in, in um, like, Pico, almost like borderline Pico, the city of Whittier. And it's not, like, a well-known shop or anything like that, but I remember when I went in there, they were very... Um, is this the shop that... The shop shop? No, nah, oh. no. Nah. no, nah, fuck no. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, they weren't welcoming either, dog. They were just, like, a lot, they were, like, full of themselves, you know? And, like, and I didn't know any better, dog. You know, I, I for sure thought it was, I was, like, I don't know. I was just blessed to be there, you know, even though yeah. they were treating me like shit. And, um, so whatever. I, I think they kicked me out after, like, a week or something because one of the artists there wasn't fucking with me for whatever reason. And, um, whatever. I'm testing on my house again. And then, so, okay, pertains to, like, you know, getting to your goals and stuff. And yeah. so I, I understood what I wanted was to be at a tattoo studio, right? Like, and um and not a tattoo shop so the first thing that i did that i understood what i had to do um to get there is to one maybe get um a collection of the best tattoos that i feel i've done of at course, that time you know right. like a portfolio and like a portfolio, portfolio yeah. right so i'll get my photos get the maybe the top 10 ones that i like get good printouts of them yeah. buy a nice fucking folder for them put of them course. in right and yeah. right these are little baby steps but that's the first step right to make a portfolio then the second step for me was to hit up shops that I feel would probably take me in, you know, that I right. feel, you know, aren't too much out of my goal. I thought I, I tattooed dec decently at that time, but fuck, I probably didn't, you know? Yeah. And um, so I did. I hit up this shop right here in downtown. It was called Sacred Art Tattoos. I think The one like, right here. I, I think they moved, actually. I think. Um, but this is the one, right? Yeah, it's the one yeah, right here. Yeah. Well, I tattooed at two of them here because okay. the first one I tattooed at was Sacred Art. And then one of the homies there made his own shop another studio in the same building and okay. I started tattooing with him for a little bit. But yeah, the first shop was Sacred Art and um, I hit up the owner, his name was Adrian, I think his name is Adrian Caro and uh, he told me to come down and chop it up with them and I did. I went down, dog, I was like super nervous and um, I showed him my portfolio, we chopped it up and um, I got a I got a spot to tattoo there, you know? Nice. And How long were you there? Mm hmm. Yeah, I was probably there for like a year, like a year and a half, maybe two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't there for long, you know. I wasn't there for long because, uh, again, like my other homie opened up another shop there too. And I think I ended up moving to his shop for like another year or two. Mm. And then from there, this is when you came to the gallery? No. So after that, when I was at my homie, my other homie's shop, his name is Sketch. Um, he owns it in Temple, right? That's the shop that he opened. Okay. And it's right there in that building. It's like right there where the where the last bookstore is at, right? Okay. And um, it's on seventh, right, or something like that. It's like on sixth and spring or something. Okay. Where are we on? 7th? Well, we're on sixth and spring. Oh, it's on fourth. Okay. It's on fourth and spring. That was on seventh. No, it's on fourth. So okay. Yeah, I don't know who you wanted to check that, but <laughs> it's, it's for sure. The on last fourth. bookstore. Where were the fucking last bookstores? Yeah, I have it's on no idea. And spring, All right, very well, very well. Very well. Hundred <laughs> percent. Uh huh. And um, yeah, after that, um, I got a chance to tattoo. At another private studio, and this one is yes. the one in Montebello. Yeah. 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 Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. yeah. This, <laughs> nice. So, that, that's a perfect segue, right? That's, that, that brings, like, to the next thing. So, um, let's talk about how 
I'm pretty sure people want to know, maybe, like, because obviously we work together. You know, we sure. we hang out a lot. Sure. Unfortunately. No, nah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's a perfect segue right into, like, how I met Julius. Um, I think I touched on this before. And, you know, <clears throat> um, there's, like, a lot of people who have helped me personally with my tattoo career. Uh, you know, I could go on, like, the list is a very long list. And then I usually, occasionally, shout these people out. Um, if, if, you, if, if you've watched the other podcast, yeah, probably, sure. you probably heard your name. But um, so how, how I met Julius, right? Um, my sister, Monica, uh, her Instagram is at Monica.LA, I think. Monica.LA, I think so. And her boyfriend, Tony, I think it's at 12G Tone. So Tony and uh, Julius used to work together at the studio Montebello. Yeah, that's where we met. And... Um, Tony helped me with getting supplies. That's how I started getting into tattooing, where I, I started hanging out with Tony, and I would watch him tattoo at this private studio, and I was very interested in tattooing. And I was like, damn, I think I could do this, you know? Back, this is like in 20... 20... 20 like, late 2020, I think. Yeah, like, 2019, 2020. No, 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 2020. Because I wrote that Ghost List on October 3rd, 2020. So it was like... So it was right before I opened up the gallery then. It's right oh, before it was right before I it opened was, up the gallery. So this is, this is the segue into that. So it's right before you opened the gallery. Yeah. So, long story medium, right? I started wanting to get into tattooing, and I thought you had to have a license to buy all these supplies. I did not know that. So I told, I told Tony, I said, hey, dog, like, I need all these supplies. Can you get them for me? So Tony bought them from the guy at uh, the, the, the van guy. Yeah, I don't know if it was Jerry. Yeah, and then so he ran into Tony, and you asked him, like. Um, yeah, I went outside, and Tony was buying all this fucking shit. He just had a box of, like, <laughs> all this shit, like, that people usually get to start off, right? But Tony had all that shit already. Yeah, yeah, so sure, I was like, yeah. What the fuck? I was like, who's he buying this for? Yeah. And I was like, who are you buying this for? And then, I don't know, he was being very short with me. He was, uh, he was just like, uh, he was like, oh, it's from a, I don't know, I don't fucking remember. But uh, I remember it took a lot for me to, to like. Get it out door. of him. Yeah, for but sure. But who is this, who is this for? Yeah, for who, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, and that's when I first heard your name. That's when I first knew that you were yeah, trying to get into sure, it. Yeah, shit. yeah. So that's, so that's how Julius heard of me, right? So then, this is like late 2020. I was starting to tattoo a little bit. I think probably like. September, October ish, sometime around. That. I wasn't even really tattooing. I was like doing it part time. Maybe before October. Yeah, because you opened the gallery when? In October. Okay, so it was like September. Yeah. It was like September because I remember Tony. I like two months before. September yeah, because like Tony, before. Tony was telling me, he's like, "Oh yeah, my homie's opening up a private studio. It's a penthouse studio." Now, this is crazy. And I was like, "Damn, that's fucking dope, right?" This is fucking nuts. This is what I want to talk about. Well, so perfect timing, you know? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect timing. So. Backtrack before Tony was buying me all my supplies. Tony was like, "Yeah, my homie Julius is opening up a studio, dog. It's a penthouse." And I was like, "Damn, that's fucking dope." And I remember at the time I was working at my old job. I was running this business, and like low key, I fucking hated my life. I mean, I was making good money for sure, but I still hated my life, right? I did. I fucking yeah, I, mean, exactly. I had a boss. You know, I had like shit. a four letter B yeah, word, you know, the boss. And um, <clears throat> I was like, "Damn, Tony, that sounds dope." Like. You should fucking go. And Tony was like, oh, I think I'm going to do it. I don't know yet. I was like, you should definitely do it. Like, And I swear to God, I remember thinking to myself, which is fucking crazy. I was like driving and I drove past the building. What like, building? This, Over like, there. No, because I knew this was going to be the area. He told me that you were going to get it here. Oh, okay. But how did you know it was going to be this building? Because Tony told me. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Somehow, somehow it guess. came up. All right, for sure, for sure. Somehow it came up and I drove past it and I was like, Damn, I would love. Yeah, that's crazy. I was like, I would love to tattoo at a private. And this is before I even started thinking about tattooing. Mm. I was like, damn, man, imagine if I fucking tattooed, like, be became a tattoo artist and tattooed in a fucking penthouse in downtown LA. And that that's was it. That, that was it. And then, you know, a month, two months later, Tony starts buying me my supplies. And then you started following me on Instagram. Yeah. And at the time, I was like scratching, bro. I was fucking people up. Fucking them up. You know, I was fucking them up. It happens last time. Mean, Hell crazy, yeah. You know? Shout out to all those motherfuckers who I fucked <laughs> Gracias. up. Gracias. Gracias. Uh, yeah, fool. I was at my one, one motherfucking bedroom apartment in Irvine, cooking up in the kitchen, That's scratching right. motherfuckers. That's right. You know? And I remember Julius followed me, and I was like, oh, my God, this guy just followed me. Like, oh, shit. He has, like, X amount of followers. I was like, dude, it's so cool, right? Now I just, I fucking hate this guy. But, yeah, <laughs> so I was like, damn, it's so cool. You know, like, this guy follows me, and he would comment on my stuff, you know, and I was like, damn, this is cool. And, um, you know, 
days go by and I'm still scratching, tattooing. Yeah, I like that Pieta, right? That's yeah, yeah. Like, Tony that's helped me with that shit. Yeah, yeah, shout out my boy Tony, you know. He helped me. You know what, Tony? Before I go any further, Tony helped me a lot. You know, he definitely helped me with like learning how to blend smoothly. Oh, yeah. uh, lettering, I, you know, it wasn't, he didn't, he doesn't do lettering, but he helped me with like, you know, in the beginning with the application and learning how to apply certain tones and that, that Pieta he did, that food, that, people, he, he, Tony was my, Tony's my homie, right? He was always like, Bro, you did that. I was like, mm, no, I kind of didn't. Fool. Was like that you, the second one that you did? No, that was the first one. That's what I did on that on the shoulder. Oh, yeah. The free one. Oh, okay, but that, that I, second I, one. Remember, that was that second one that, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was cool, too. But shout out to my man. What's his name on Instagram? I think it's Kerr Loser. Shout out that motherfucker. I fucked him up a lot. I think it's like K-E-R dot loser. I fucked him up. Bro, my first freehand piece was on his stomach. It says sacrifice. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. You sacrificed his stomach for That's sure, right, bro. For like, sure. that shit was fucked up. We should Damn. put it in. Dang. You should we find should, a fucking hey, picture we, that I'm going to find a photo of it video. right now. Right and put it, yeah, you guys, man, this shit took a long, bro. Let me show you guys real quick before we start. Uh, I want to show you guys because don't just think like. You have that just like right there ready yeah, to go? Yeah, fuck yeah, I have this shit ready to go. Damn. Because, right. you know, I want to show people like, yo, this shit takes time, dog. You know, oh, yeah. like, but I have this photo I want to show you guys. And I, um. I fucked him up. You don't have that shit ready to go, bro. Nah, I do. We're gonna. F I'm gonna find him right now. Bear with me, guys. We're gonna play some uh, elevator music. Yeah, we're here. Look, boom. Look at that shit. Oh shit, that's Fuck. right. Sick ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Here, look, everybody on Instagram, yeah. you can see that. Look at that shit's all fucked up. Oh my god. Sick ass. Yo, ass. shout out my boy. Shout out my boy Kurt. Yeah, that's mad love, love, love right love there, this, dog. Love the transparency. So I fucked him up. Damn, dog. We'll show it on the camera so you guys can see. I mean, it'll, it'll be a photo of it, I'm sure. <coughs> oh, no. We're going to put a photo. Put a, for a sure. We're going to put a photo. That video and that camera won't do it justice, <laughs> dog. Want, so everyone can see this very clearly. No, nah, that's what it is. Though, yeah, no, that's yeah. what it is. You got to start somewhere, you know? But anyways, I was tattooing a lot, right? And I was... And I was, you know, fucking people up. But I was starting to get better. I was. I was starting to get a little better. And Julius would like comment. He'd be like, hey, Rock, you're like, damn, bro, your work is dope. It's getting better. And I was like, damn, that's so cool. And at this time, it was like January, February. And I never met you. Nah. I, I, I we never just each other. I never met Julius, but we messaged each other. And I was like, thanks, bro. Like, oh my God, that means so much coming from me. And he'd be like, yeah, try this, try that. Um, you know, do this. And you're getting better. Keep it up. And that shit was so, inc you know, it's so crazy. <laughs> like thinking about my life now like when people message me and they say certain things like that i'm so like oh like oh, I, I don't know why you're thanking me i should be thanking you because obviously i'm glad you find substance in something that i have to say or something that i do yeah, yeah you yeah, find substance in right no, but that was now now it's I'm, I'm living that life where like that's how i felt when you were messaging me mm -hmm. like oh my I god this means a lot sure. you know so you know, I'm sorry that if people message me and I don't get to them all the messages or I sound like I'm coming off weird. It's just I don't know how to express that yet. But I, I am appreciative of all yeah. that, right? It makes you I, like I really am. Sure, I, I really know? am. Like, damn, I really like, am. Like you're living for something, you know? You're not yeah. just like living just, yeah, yeah, it's not just getting, a piece yeah. of shit on earth. You know, like you're definitely doing something for somebody else, you know? And it's, it's a life worth living, you know? It makes you feel good. It makes you feel full and shit. Yeah. So I felt the same way, bro, so. And so with that being said, I had still hadn't met Julius yet. But we were messaging on Instagram. And at this time, um, this guy, I'm not going to name the tattoo studio. What the fuck? I'm not going to do him any favors. But I tattooed, I was, uh, I got an opportunity to tattoo at this walk-in shop in Santa Monica. Oh, yeah. Bro. Yeah. 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 So, so I went to this, I went to this uh, walk-in shop in Santa Monica. And mind you, I had another job. But the reason why I was able to do all this is because I had faked I had COVID. I faked I had COVID. I faked I got sick. I, like, right. I, I like messed up the test and said, I'm sick. And I got like, I was off for like got 30 paid days. And shit. I was off for 30 days of work, you know? That's right. Damn, I hope this doesn't go viral. Nah. Nah. Oh, it will. I don't know. Well, Anyways, yeah. So yeah. I faked I had COVID. So I was off for like a very long time. So I was like, I'm going to tattoo as much as I can, you know? So I had an opportunity. I tattooed in Santa Monica. And I was there. And I never experienced a walk-in shop, right? I never did because when, when I when I would watch Tony tattoo, he was in the private studio on a bellow. Yeah. So when I got introduced to tattooing, obviously I've been tattooed since I was younger. I would go into walk-in shops, right? But I didn't know that there's people who tattoo in private studios. Like, 
Oh, I, I remember when Tony first tattooed me, he brought out the, the rotary pen and his iPad. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, where's like the drawing table? Where's the coil machine? Where's like the loud noise? Because I was so used to the walking studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So when Tony tattooed me and I realized, damn, I haven't been tattooed over a decade. This is how much tattooing has changed. So when I got introduced to the, to the new era, I guess, of tattooing, whatever the case is, like, I didn't know that people actually tattoo privately, you know, that, that it's a thing. So... When I got introduced to that, like where Tony would go, tattoo his one client, and he would fucking bounce. Didn't have nobody to talk to. He didn't have to listen to nobody or right. or handle like walk-in customers and that shit. So when I guest spotted at this walk-in shop in Santa Monica, I was waiting for my client. I was drawing a design. It was like a letter on my homie Eric Diaz. Shout out to Eric Diaz. That motherfucker's been getting tattooed by me from the beginning, bro. Right. From the fucking beginning. Shout out to Eric, man. You're my G. So, um, I was doing a uh, D97, I think, on his legs for Diaz, D97. Is that your crib over there? Remember that that, that one, that big ass, that tall ass white fool, it was all buff. Nah, yeah, I remember. That fool, that, that beast tattooed, yeah. he, that, uh, he tattooed Diaz on his back. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that I tattooed him at the studio, at the walking shop. Oh, in Santa Monica. Yeah, in Santa Monica. So, I remember I was waiting for Eric to pull up like, like at 3 p.m., and the fucking, um, see, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. But the, the, the owner was like, hey, Rocky, um, a walk-in just came in. And uh, sh uh, you want oh, yeah. you, you want a tattoo? And I was like, and in my head, I'm like, the fuck? No. I have an appointment at 3 yeah. o'clock. Because like, I asked him, I said, should I bring my own clients? He goes, oh, yeah, you should bring your own clients. So I said, all right, fucking bring my own client. Yeah. You know? And now, and in retrospect, thinking back now, like, damn, I just started tattooing like two or three months, and I already had like a clientele. That's right. Kind and of. That, was, that was the owner's fuck up, too, for, yeah, like, yeah. for telling you that, like, yeah, bring your own client. So, and if he's expecting, right. You know, walk-ins or something. So like a walk-in came in, and she wanted like this fucking butterfly, or like, no, 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 no. What's that thing from Peter Pan? Tinkerbell? Uh, Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. Mm -hmm. She wanted a Tinkerbell. Fuck. And he was like, go talk to the receptionist. And I was like, okay, whatever. And my appointment's at 3 o'clock. It was like 1 o'clock. And she was like, hey, Rocky, this walk-in just came in. You want to do this walk-in? I was like, no. I was like, she's like, it's a Tinkerbell, something easy. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. She's like, well, why not? And I was like, what the fuck? Why am I having to... Even stress myself out for sure. Why am I even having, having to answer? Because I, w I was unaware. I was unaware because I was so used to how Tony tattooed. Tony and Ish, they were in a room secluded from walk-in. So I was like... This is new. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Yeah. So I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I have an appointment at three. You told me to be my own appointment, brought my own appointment. <laughs> fuck yeah. Yeah. No, no, but no, but I, I, kept the, I kept the cordial. Yeah, I kept the cordial. Yeah. Anyways, I tattooed and I was on a break. And then you hit me up. You you text me. Oh, yeah. You you know, you DM me and you said, hey, Rocky, I have a spot open in April. That's when you did your second pieta, remember? Yes. I fucking fucked with that so heavy, dog. And you were like, I have a spot open in April. Do you want it? And I was ta I'm in the middle of a tattoo. I was in the middle of, like, my 30 days of leave from COVID, still working at my old job. And as soon as you messaged me that, I was, like, done. I was, like, fuck yeah. I didn't even talk to my old, but I didn't care about any of that shit. All I knew was that, how was it that five months prior, I was, like, man, I would love to tattoo at a penthouse studio. I would love to be a full-time tattoo artist. And everything was happening yeah, bro. every that's everything dog you. You and know you know what's so crazy, crazy. You know, it's crazy before that i never talked to, i never i don't think i ever told anybody this when i was tattooing part-time right i went to costco to get a prescription for contacts and i swear i wish i took a picture of i should have took a picture and it asked occupation mm, and, I, and i and i remember I, right. damn, I wish i took a picture of that and i put tattoo i put artist. tattoo artists yeah, I swear like, to God, right, I put, right, I put, right. I put tattoo artists and I wasn't even a tattoo artist. I wasn't, I was still working at the old job, but I was like, fuck that. And I put tattoo artists, bang, bang. I was like, All right, cool. Like, that's it. You know? And then five months later, Dick is like, what the fuck? That's so that's what I mean, right? About manifesting, right? Or as far as like, you know, taking those leaps. And when you told me, you said, I have a spot up and I said, fuck that. Like I'm taking this shit. Like I don't get, I didn't even care about my apartment, my car, none of that shit. I was like, I want to do this full fucking time. And I still hadn't met, I didn't hadn't met you yet. What a fucking way of thinking, you know? Like, that's so crazy that like, you even decided to write that shit down, right? Like, bro, I swear. That's, like, that's fucking, that's some dope shit. You know, that's a, I wish that's I took a, a picture story, of that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, bro, I remember, I remember that so vividly. I was like, yeah, that's dope. Occupation. I was like, tattoo artist. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, this is the first time you telling me that shit. I, I never that's told anybody. Dope. I never yeah, told anybody sure, that. Yeah, yeah. 
And I don't know why it's so significant, why it even popped in my head now, but... It is, well, fuck, I mean, it's significant because, like, that's how, that's, like, the ultimate, like, belief in yourself, right? Of, like, oh. this is, I know I'm gonna do this, right? And that's so crazy. What up, like, Chato? Yeah. That I even knew that, like, before, I mean, just to, to have the idea to, like, I'm gonna write that shit down, right? I mean, that's some shit you speak to the universe, you know, and, like, here we are. Yeah, bro, and, and that's what's so crazy, dog, like, and, and then, you know, you, fuck, five months later, you hit me up, and... And I remember you said, come to the studio, let's chop it up. And I remember I came here the first time, and you had the ch- you had the chest set up right here. Now we're playing outside, no? Nah, dude, oh, we're shit. playing right yeah. here. Yeah. And I remember I walked into this motherfucking penthouse, dog, and I was like, damn. I was like, this shit is fu-. And And now looking back, you know, dog, like yeah, we- A lot of shit's changed, bro. But, <laughs> like, like, we work here, right? So every day, like- I put the key in there and I open the door and it's just a penthouse. But when, when clients come here, bro, and they trip, like, oh my God, it's a penthouse. And I'm thinking to myself, bro, it's just relax. But then I think just right now it dawned on me. Like, I remember the very first time I walked in this bitch. Yeah. So maybe I don't want I should stop taking, and I'm sorry for all the clients, right? I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to take joy away from that because, you know, they come in here, they're like, oh, wow, look at the view. And I'm just like, yeah, that's cool. Like in my head, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But then I, I could forget, like, Maybe they have never been to a penthouse. Yeah. Right? And maybe they've never been. Uh, I've never some, been to a penthouse. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like I've now thinking about it, talking right now, like, damn, like, I got to do better at that. But, yes, I walked in. It was all dark. It was late at night. I walked in. Julius had, like, the chessboard set up. Like, he wanted to fucking. That was my way in or not. If I could beat him in chess. Or something. I'm pretty sure I beat you. I think you did beat Yeah, me. I beat you. <laughs> I was no, I'm not pretty sure. Now no, you think I did. I did. I think I, I did, I did memory, beat you in chess. <laughs> You know, <laughs> for, for the sake of arguing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your so, podcast is just so let it, let it happen. He won. I walked in and it was like, yeah, I remember walking in. And I was just like, wow, yeah. like this is fucking dope. And it was dark and it was a clear sky, so you could see all of, you know, downtown LA. And I remember thinking to myself at that moment, I was like, wow, I can't believe this shit. Like, I thought about this four or five months ago. You know, and it's fucking happening, bro. Damn, yeah, for sure. Damn, and I have those fucking blue couches for my old fucking crib and shit. Like, the fucking waiting room looked like a fucking living bro, room. Bro, we didn't have these lights on the yeah, wall. It, it, we didn't yeah. have all the, like, most of this shit we didn't have on no, there the was wall. No, there was nothing like this. I remember. Like this. I think that fucking mirror came from my house. But other than that, like, nothing else was here. And then, you know, I fucking, I was like, yeah, dude, I'm ready to go. And I started in April and fuck. Never, never looked back. I remember I celebrated my my thirtieth, thirty first, thirty first birthday. Yeah. I went to Vegas. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I went to Vegas April first, second, third, and then I started the gallery April fourth. It was like the perfect. It was it. it it's crazy how everything aligned. Everything aligned. So I went to Vegas celebrating my birthday, bringing in my thirty first birthday. And then boom, I came back and started working at the gallery. Yeah, and if you think things aligned for you, like when that happened, dog, like that shit was a blessing for me, just as much as you think it was for you, dog. Because like I said again, dog, like you taught me a lot of shit about business, about how people should view the gallery and shit like that, right? And I think like it was just a mad learning curve for me, right? Like a lot that we've been through and shit that you talked yeah. to me about, dog. Because like I've never had like I've never had like a business, and I didn't know anything about business sense and shit like that, and like you know how you tell me like we sh- what we should have for our clients yeah, and shit yeah. like that you know like it was a big blessing for, for me that day too dog when you when you like decided to tattoo with us and stuff and i fucking appreciate you dog like yeah for sure bro of course but um yeah and like pertaining to like what you said too like when i first got the gallery too and i like opened up the door you know like it was a trip like when i got the keys to this place and shit like that because i never thought i'd have like shit like this you know like i never thought i'd be able to afford shit like this and like i remember for the first month it would just trip me out when like the sun was setting and shit, and it looks nice as fuck outside, like pink and reds and shit outside, and it's just a trip, you know, but obviously, you know, we've been here for three years now and shit, and it's I know crazy. we do get, like, accustomed to, like, our work environment, you know, but every day, I mean, I'm, I, I never take it for granted, you know, I know yeah, you don't, like, and, I don't, no. but yeah, I guess, like, the scenery does, we get used to it and stuff like that, but, you know, sometimes it's, there's, like, beautiful as it is, and, you know, we just kick it, dog, and yeah, so, yeah. out on shit like that, too. Man, dog, like, yeah. a month ago, there was, like, two remember that shit? beautiful, <laughs> yeah, big-ass bro. rainbows, and I was like, damn, this is two big-ass rainbows, dog. We're just looking at each other and shit for a minute, or what? I was looking at you, you were looking at me, and right. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> do you see that? <laughs> yeah, I see it. But, yeah, it was, it, it's cool. I think you are right. I mean, I don't take anything for granted at all, especially the gallery, you know, but... It, it is different, I guess, because we do work here every day. We come in, and, and it's just the norm to us. But it's definitely a blessing, bro. Like, you know, um, 
That that is one thing that we like to do here at the gallery too, right? We we've gotten we've gotten a lot of cool compliments, bro. Like it's like it's such a fucking rad feeling when clients come here, man, and you know they not only okay for example, right? A client for the most part, right? If they come to you for a tattoo, they get tattooed by you. They're gonna have a good. They're gonna love the tattoo, but the experience is completely different, right? You can give somebody a great tattoo and that's all they expect, but when they come, bro, and and by the time they leave, yes, they're happy with their tattoo. You can leave it open, Alfonso. They're happy with their tattoo. But then when they're like, but dog, the experience was yeah. dope. That shit matters more. So, and, and sometimes in, 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 certain, in certain cases, right? Because when they leave the gallery, they're like, yeah, I got this dope ass tattoo. But also like... Man, they did this. They they had a you know they they bought me food. They offered oh, drinks so. or whatever the case is. They made me feel at home. The vibes were chill. You know when when they have to say stuff like that. Also, along with how badass their tattoo is, that's what matters, bro. Because remember, at the end of the day, even though we are tattoo artists, we're still in the customer. Uh, uh what is it called? Service. Uh, customer service, right? We're still in that. We 100%. are we are very much in that. Like, yeah. Although we are tattoo artists, we still supply a service, and we still have to remember to give great customer service. One hundred percent. Nah, fuck yeah, because they fuck with it so much, and I think it's different than like a tattoo shop too. I mean, I'm not. There's a lot of tattoo shops too that are dope as fuck, you know. Yeah, of course. I think like one thing with tattoo shops is that I don't know. There are a lot of like grumpy people sometimes in these shops, bro. and uh, when a client comes into these kind of shops and shit, they'll probably get like fucked up faces from certain artists and shit. I'm sure they don't mean to and shit, but. I mean, every environment is different. You know, even if you're in, like, a nice studio, too, or whatever, dog, like, I don't know. You may have some shit people in there, some shit artists that, I don't know, yeah, give true. your client a bad vibe or something like that. But, again, all that shit that, you know, experience is a big thing. And I learned that shit from Rocky, too, right? Like, when Rocky first started tattooing here and shit like that, um, I didn't have all that stuff. Like, you know, like, we have, like, a kitchen here and everything, too, right? Like, a uh, refrigerator and everything. But I didn't have, like, no waters or no snacks for anybody. You know, I just didn't think about shit like that, you know, because um, at the studios at the studios where I was at before, they didn't pertain to customer service like that, you know? Right, and I just right. never thought of shit like that, you know? But, I mean, the more comfortable you can make your client feel, the better, you know? Oh, and yeah, I've had clients sure. tell me all the time that they come back because they just feel more attended to, you know, and just more... Like Homeboy, they got the, the they Power feel, Ranger food. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, dog, yeah. Like Martin, bro, like, he's, yeah... One of my clients, man, he like he gets tattooed by me a lot, and I appreciate it a lot. Like he trusts me a lot. He's very patient with me and shit. Cause I I take a long time to like tattoo that food dog, but um, yeah, he told me he keeps coming back because he just feels very comfortable like being here, and uh, as opposed to other shops that he's been at, you know, he yeah. doesn't feel like the same kind of vibe, and he, he just feels like at home. He says, you know, so I fuck with that, and it obviously lets me know that like. We're doing something right, dog. You know, yeah, so for I, sure. Again, yeah, I appreciate you for shit like that. I mean, no, no, that's just crazy, crazy, dog. Come on, you know, my boy. You already know, right, know, right. know, I know, that's right. So, like, and, 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 and hitting on that, right, about surroundings, and I feel like that's one thing that's really cool about the gallery, you know. Um, we start instit instituting this thing where, you know, we interview, like, so, for example, right now we're looking for an artist, yeah, right? We are. And typically we'll interview artists, right? And I know for some it might sound pretentious, but that's not the case at all, right? I think because... We want to guard what we have here at the gallery. We want we, we love the morale. We love the chemistry we have here, and I think we all do love our jobs so much. We're, we're very passionate about what we do, um, and we want to protect that, right? So we're not going to just let any fucking person come into the gallery and just tattoo here. Yeah, you know. So we do do that. We will have interviews and we'll sit down and we'll fucking ask these people so like, sure we vibe with them. yeah, yeah, make sure yeah, they yeah. Fuck with the art and all this shit because we all do fuck around a lot. We yeah, like, of course. love each other a lot, bro. And I, and I think that's a really good, it's a really good unique energy that we have, you know? So yeah, yeah. Like that shit's so crazy. But yeah, you know, obviously we've interviewed and then some people that we interview, you know, I don't know, maybe they're very, I don't know, short answered or very yeah. stiff or maybe, I don't know. And, but that could be because they're nervous too, dog. Well, of course, so, of I mean, course, of course. Things, but but yeah, we do look for I, something I specific. Yeah, and I think it's better that we are interviewing people people now because before we didn't, you know. And, we did, and, and then it was we, all a turnover. We've been through a lot of yeah, shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, we've yeah, been yeah, through yeah. a lot of artists, <laughs> you know. Yeah. A lot of artists. And some of these, you know, people um, have their own habits and stuff, you know. And it just doesn't pertain to what we want here. In the and area, I think you know? since we've done more interviews, right, the turnover has been less. Oh, a thousand percent, yeah. yeah. Fuck for yeah. sure, Beca yeah, because we will decide right away. Like, you know, we'll we'll ask some pretty uncomfortable questions. Like, you know, we won't even tell them we're interviewing them. We we'll say, yeah, come in, and then we sit them down in the waiting room, and then they're like, "What the fuck's going on here?" Like, and and they don't know how to answer the questions. Well, that's <laughs> the great. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. like, "What the fuck's going on? What am I? I'm being attacked here." 
but like I said, I think because we protect, we want to protect the gallery so much as far as the energy we have here. And we want to make sure that motherfuckers are going to come here. You know, they have a, a, a strong work ethic and they're passionate about their, about their craft, man. Because, um, you know, I, I could say everybody here, you know, they really, really care about their art. That's one, that's one thing I love about the gallery. Yeah, that shit's Julius. crazy, bro. I you know? love that shit. Yeah, bro. Like everybody here tattooing, man, like we'll, we'll, we'll tattoo. And I'll go upstairs or come down or whatever. You'll come downstairs and we'll look at each other's work. And I'll be like, damn, like, uh, nah, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and work on my shit just a little bit more, you know. Or, yeah. And that's just fucking dope. And I feel like everybody here at the gallery, all nine of us, you know, are progressing. You know, I'll, maybe not quickly or you could say quickly, but at a rapid rate for sure. Because I think everybody here pushes each other so much. Yeah, we're much. so comfortable with each other. And we definitely talk to each other about what we feel we need help on, you know. And yeah. I, I feel shit like that doesn't come very often you know to yeah. have that kind of fucking energy and vibe and you know artists working with you I and i think that. nobody I, honestly I, I could say it, bro i don't feel like there's any ego here what up helen there's no there's no ego here you know i feel like everybody is like willing to, to listen to anybody you know if they have like an opinion yeah never that no hell you no. know yeah so it, it's it's really cool we have like a lot of different artists here you know that specialize in different things so i feel like being at the gallery there's a lot of things you can learn from different artists with different backgrounds some people have you know more uh experience than others and i think that it's like a, a really cool thing what we have here at the gallery you know yeah. going on fucking what almost four years now right yeah it's gonna be four years in october you know and i fucking love it too because like even if someone's been tattooing for longer than someone you know like you're right there are no egos here you know like i love learning from anyone that I can when I get the opportunity to, you know, yeah. and, and, um, damn, where was I going with this? Um, <laughs> yeah, there are no egos. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, there's always something to learn, you know, so if you feel like you, I don't care how long you've been tattooing for, like, there's always something to learn, you know, and I yeah. fucking love being able to ask anybody here for help, you know, and vice yeah. versa, you know, and, and yeah, that's just fucking beautiful. Yeah, because you know that we have we have had artists come in like guest spot and who have like a lot of years, and they'll ask like, "Damn, like, how do you do this? How do you do that?" And that's cool because I feel like that is the only way to grow, right? I feel like you have to be open to that. Yeah, you know? why not? Yeah, just because I mean, I'll still use him as an example every day. Like G Baby, you know that motherfucker's only been tattooing for like X amount of years, and. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I there's nothing that fool can't do. Bro. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> this fucking guy, like he 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 wanted to do some lettering and this motherfucker He's like, he, is that good? And he's like, Fuck. And he yeah. FaceTimed me, right? I was out yeah. and he was like, I need help. I was like, fool, I got you, dog. Like I so I excused myself and I said, What do you need help with, Papa? I'm like, I'll help you for whatever you need help with. And I was helping him and he was like, I'm so nervous. Like, nah, don't be nervous, fool. Don't trip. I was like, you know what? I'm out right now. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up early. I'm going to go to the gallery. I'm going to work on something for you. And I worked on it for him, and I sent him, like, a really rough sketch. And he was like, oh, man, I'm nervous. I'm like, honestly, G-Baby, dude, like, you're so multi-talented. Like, even if I draw something for you, like a sketch, you're still going to kill it. And he fucking killed it. He was nervous about I was like, the application fuck you, what? dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, man. You know, but no, but I guess he was just nervous because it was lettering. And this motherfucker freehanded it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. He freehanded that, that shit. Do, bro. bro, he was like, I told him, I was like, you're going to freehand this shit, right? He goes like, yes. I was like, yeah, don't be, don't be bringing that bullshit around here. Right. And he fucking freehanded it, bro. Yeah, fuck and, and I bro. fucking man, I love that kid because he, you know, he he pushed. That's why he. But that's what and I'm saying, right? Now, you know, bro, yeah. Like, so oh, and that that should give you like some fucking sort of insight that, that you can definitely like anything is a yeah because and right? you like, you push yourself you, you by pushing yourself so right? You want, right yeah you, know, you get you too dog like that's crazy that's what yeah I love that shit it always just keeps you corrected you know and that's what I was gonna say is that when I'm tattooing and like whatever like I feel like I'm tired or frustrated or something like that you know or if I feel I'm almost done tattooing right right um. I love how much everyone here takes their time, you know, or even like our friends too take their time tattooing and shit. Um, but anyway, going coming back downstairs and looking at all the artists around me and they're still tattooing and they've been tattooing for a couple of hours and stuff like that, you know, and they're still going strong with it and they know they're going to be here for another couple of hours. It just kind of like corrects me again that like, okay, like maybe it's normal to feel anxiety and shit like that, but I know I shouldn't like rush, you know, so just I feel like we all keep each other on check, you know, oh, for and sure. I love that shit. I, absolutely. I love it. Oh, yeah, definitely, bro. I feel like nobody here is rushing their work, you know, or trying to get out of here quickly. Like Everybody's like, nah, I'm on this shit. Because, you know, I talk about this often, you know, 
the reason why I know I push myself as hard is because I never want to be like that last person, like the and person, right? So, yeah. you know, I talk about this and, and if, you know, when, hey, man, all those guys at the gallery are dope, you know, Julius, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and Rocky. No, man, I'll oh, fuck that. I don't want, I don't want to be the and guy, like the guy you, oh, and then and, and there's Rocky. It's yeah. like, nah, fuck that. And I think here at the gallery, everybody's in a healthy competition with them, like with each other because they're like, oh, nah, like I want to, like, damn, look at what Rocky just did, or look what Helen just did, or look what David, or not David, I'm oh, sorry, Jason, or Danny, you know, whoever, yeah. Angie, you. And there's no gatekeeping here, you know? I yeah, know, yeah of course, yeah, that yeah. Shit, right? Like, that shit's some pussy shit. I don't know if we could say that on <laughs> You can say, yeah, you can say pussy if you want. <laughs> like a cat, you know? <laughs> but no, yeah, yeah because, we don't, we don't, we don't. Know, because if someone is gatekeeping or something like that, you know, and they don't want to give you, like, I get it, you know, like, if, if you just meet somebody, you know, I wouldn't. I don't know, want yeah. to give them as much as I know or whatever. And But the only reason I wouldn't want to at first is because I don't know if they truly fuck with the art or not. Of right? course, That'd be right, the, right. Like the only initial reason why I wouldn't want to tell somebody something if I first meet them, right? But if I do understand that they fuck with the art and shit like that, why would, why would I You're pretty open about you? that. Yeah, you yeah. are, yeah. Why would I not want to help you, you know? like, And if I don't want to help you, that, that would mean that I'm either like not confident in my own like love for the art and my yeah. skills or maybe I'm scared that you're going to take my client away or something. But that's, again, that's just... That's some just pussy shit, you know? Because like, <laughs> you shouldn't, bro. I mean, that's like, I don't know. It's, you should be confident in yourself to, yeah, for sure. you know, if, if you're going to do a good job and shit like that, like, yeah. um, you're going to kill it every time and you probably shouldn't worry about somebody else taking your client. And even if they do take your client, who gives a fuck? Like, who gives a there fuck? There are so many fucking people out there. Bro, there's like a billion people in the yeah. world. Yeah, I was saying that like a couple of days ago. There's like yeah, a billion so, people in the world. But yeah. That, that's another thing, too. I feel like... Um, you know, confidence is very important too, right? Like being being confident in that. Confident. And then what were you saying too? You were saying um, because you don't want to be that like end link, right? That, oh, that, that the end, the end guy. Link. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing too, dog. Right. But another reason why I would want to put like my full effort into tattooing is because like I will never, ever, ever fucking work for anybody ever again. And like, Bro, so right, you take those, you take those chances, that. you take those chances, right, to like quit your job and like be here at the mm. gallery and shit like that, mm. right? Like I took my chance to like spend to invest my money as a lot of it into this like you know, penthouse, right? And I still didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do, like, in the future or, or what was going to happen with it if I was going to have a team or not, right? But I knew one thing is that I was never going to fucking work for somebody ever again. Fuck and, and if I had to be here by myself, which I was here by myself. You for, said think, that, too. Was, yeah, you said that, yeah. I myself, like, a six-month, like, goal, yeah. you know, to, like, in six months from, like, when I moved in, you know, six months from there, like, I'm going to be out of here because I was living on top, right? It was a two-story penthouse. And, well, that's right. You yeah. were living up there. I was there. living upstairs, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, I didn't I remember. have... I spent all my money to get in. I here, remember, you know? so yeah. I just moved all my shit from I my remember house that shit. shit. Yeah, that's right. But in six months? Dude, six you, months on the fucking day, dog. I got the fuck right. out of here, bro. I, I, I left right. six yeah. months on the day. Not one day later, bro. Like, six months on the dot, I got the fuck out of here. And I don't know. It was a defining moment for me that, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm just sticking to what I said I was going to do, right? You could do whatever the fuck you want to do. do. That's what you're you sticking want. to. Like, yeah. if you truly want it, you're going to... That's why I fuck with you. Yeah, that's why I fuck with you. And because you deserve it, you know? Like, and, But again, like these things happen only if like you truly, truly believe in yourself. And just believing isn't enough, right? Like, to fucking work hard for it, dog. Because yeah, you could believe course. all you want, you know? And you could want something all you want, but you got to put that fucking work in, right? You got to truly, right. like, damn, dog. And what scared me the most is, like, I will never work for anybody ever again. Like You're, you're, you're hitting on that for sure, yeah. Well, I mean, who would want... I, mean, yeah, no, I wouldn't want to fuck like that. That, you know? that four... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no. It should slow down, right? Like, I'm sure, I don't slow, know. I'm sure it slows down for a lot of people, you know? It slows yeah. down for me sometimes, too. And, and, you know, when it does, like... I don't think you should get discouraged, but take that as like an opportunity to maybe work on other mediums or something like that, you know, and work on your art, draw more, fuck whatever. There's always something to do, right? It's not just about tattooing, right? But don't quit. Don't quit. Don't ever quit. Don't be yeah. a fucking quitter. Fucking quitters. Oh, I fucking hate quitters. I fucking hate quitters too. I talked about them on my last podcast. I fucking hate that Yeah, shit. I, oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I your nuts were itching a lot. On your yeah, last, I fucking your last hate, podcast. I hate, I hate quitters for sure. They fucking get on my nerves. God, oh my God. Yeah, those people. <laughs> um, but yeah, also another thing too, like surroundings, right? So, and that's why, like I said, you know, with how you think, bro, that's why, that's why, that's why I fuck with you so much. And that's why I relate to you because you are the same way I am as far as like, you know, you're very goal driven, very goal oriented. If you want to do something, you put your mind to it and you fucking do it. There's no, there's no like, oh, hopefully like, you know, I don't like to say those words. Like I've eliminated those words from my vocabulary. Like won't try. Yeah. Hopefully. I want. Those are like stupid words. Yeah. Those are dumb words. You know, like I replace them with like, yep. I am, yep. or I'm going to, you know, I will, you know what I mean? So, but that's why I fuck with you is because you are, you pretty much like how you're like how I am, bro. Just very different. Obviously we're, we're different people, but 
the way you think and the way you manifest what you want to get to get done too. you know, as far as like wanting to get out, do your own thing in a penthouse and then moving out six months on the date, you know, so you want to go do all these things. You want to build a big team and now here you are. And I feel like we're both, that's why we both do these things together because we're on the same path as far as wanting to be the best versions of ourselves. Damn dog. Yeah. I think about that shit a lot, right? That like, yeah. I think about that a lot to be the best version of yourself. Right. Cause I do believe in like, mo- like, multi-universes right so like they're like maybe other me's out there or some oh yeah shit. i know yeah uh-huh. and uh, i feel like i'm doing all right like in, <laughs> for myself <laughs> you know but um i can always think that there's like a better like julius out there somewhere you know like because i know i i like sometimes i drink you know and like i fuck up or and um i'm sure there's another julius out there who's like on it is like very on it you know and i think about that shit a lot i'm not like the best version i can be you know and who is like i'm a human being i don't go fuck but yeah I think that keeps me on check, you know, like to want to just reevaluate myself every day and to, I don't know, just try to better myself every day. And yeah, that's why I fuck with like, and then I fuck with what you're doing too, dog. Like obviously everyone fucks with that a lot and I'm an introvert, right? So I don't think I'd ever be able to do like, I don't know, like podcasts like this and shit. Are you doing it now? Well, I'm doing it now. Yeah. Yeah, I forced you to do it. I'm doing it because of you, you know, and like, (laughs) but I fuck with that. I fuck with the heavy, but I think it's, I think it's such a blessing to have like somebody like you, dog, like, because you give so many people so much information, so much, like, hope and, like, the will parts who want to fucking do those things that they think or thought they couldn't, you know? And, yeah. and yeah, <coughs> that's crazy, bro. Like I appreciate that. No, straight up. I mean, it's some good shit. I, f- I fuck with the heavy. I, s- I fuck with it every day, you know? Yeah, 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 I for sure. Shit. It's a blessing for me, you know? Like, all you fools are a blessing for me, for sure, dog. Like, yeah, definitely. Everybody. Everybody yeah, it's not like my, Yeah, like, the guy, I say that all the time, like, the guy wouldn't be what it is without, like, all you fools here, you know? And it yeah. took a lot of like weeding people out trial artists. and error yeah, yeah. Dog, to get where it's at you know and i fucking love where it's at right now and I, yeah. can, I can't only i can only imagine like what this year has like to offer for us you know oh for sure this year definitely i mean you know there's like endless things that you can do you can open up another gallery or even inclu- include you know more artists or whatever the case is or even open like a bigger studio a bigger shop but i still feel like the gallery is cool because the gallery is known for like the being the private penthouse, so it has like an identity already. So maybe yeah. open like another gallery or something like that. But yeah. yeah, bro. I mean, obviously you already know you could do whatever the fuck you want. Like as far as like putting your, putting your mind to it, you know. Yeah, um, I think yeah. With that, uh, yeah, I'm I'm thinking of, I'm looking to open up opening up another gallery in Pasadena. That's sick. Yeah, but fuck, I don't know. Just a lot of it's a lot of management, you know. Like it's a <laughs> lot of. Uh, but I'm I don't know, I'll figure it out. We'll see what's up. But yeah, yeah that's. Mm-mm. That's the goal. Yeah, for sure. Well, opening up another studio, maybe Pasadena. Yeah, in Pasadena. Like the gallery, too. Yeah, but then it's just, I don't know, there's a lot of shit. It's like, uh, I feel like some things are always just like popping up and shit. So, I mean, when time is right, you know, I'll fucking, I'll think about it a little more thoroughly. The spot that we saw in Pasadena last time, I right? remember we, we. That was heavy, huh? Yeah, that shit was tight. Yeah, they got fucking, yeah. They're but they already, they already, it's already vacated now. Yeah. Vacate? Vacate? No, vacant. It's Occupy. Oof. Said vacant. Oh, I gotta cut that out. Oh, I sound stupid. Yeah, you do sound stupid. <laughs> 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 Fuck you. <laughs> um, there was something else I wanted to talk about, yeah. but I just completely forgot what it was. Um, damn, it was something about surroundings. Um, about damn. the people you're with or what? I think so. But hold on, this guy says, "Can we just see y'all next month?" Who's this El Chino? Fuck you, Danny. That's D Tats LA, guys. El Chino, isn't he on the homie from uh, Sacramento? D, D. Tats LA. Go give him a follow if you want. Don't give What's him a D follow. Huh? D Tats all of LA. Isn't it? Open up that, a chapter. Somebody said Sacramento? open up a chapter in San Diego. Damn. Uh, who, but who, no, who's this guy? El Chino Tattoos. Is that, oh, is oh, that oh, 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 oh. I'm a tattoo. Oh, I know who you are. I'm a, ta- oh, I'm a damn, tattoo you. I'm a tattoo you. Fuck. It's, it's fucking hot in here. Oh, oh you're hot. Oh, you are. You're sweating. Damn. Low key. Chill, oh, it's going to have a fan yeah. on now. I mean, you know? All right. I'm just kind of getting nervous. Right. Right. Anyway, so let's talk about Sacramento. Yeah, let's talk about it. I how, fucked with it. How did you feel that trip went for you as far as, like, artist-wise? Like, as far as wanting to put out better work, maybe? Like, the second time around? Because... The second time around? Because, yes. The second time we, we were in Sacramento... Yeah, I fucked it heavy. Yeah, that the one you tattooed on Ian, that shit came out dope as fuck. Yeah, I think it's always going to be in a different environment, you know? And um, change is good, you know? Being comfortable is good. And um, I think it did a lot. It did. I mean, it did a lot for me, for sure. Like, 
you know, you're around like these fucking heavy hitters, these other foods that are very passionate and um, you see the way, the way they work, the way they operate. So like, you know, us coming from LA and shit, like you want to give off a good impression, you know? And again, you want to, sh- I don't know, let them know that I fuck, that we fuck with the art just as much as they do, you know? And yeah. that, you know, that I'm very passionate about, it, you know? So yeah, because, like, yeah. What? because when we went to Sacramento the second time when you tattooed Ian, after when you came back, your work has definitely been different. Yeah, things, dude. No, yeah, for sure. And I think just being in a different environment, you know, um, I don't know, makes you want to, like, right, maybe, it probably, like, I don't know if you see the way, you, like, you're applic- applying your tattoos when you're in a different environment, you know, because you obviously want to put out your best work. So of you, course. So you slow down, maybe, or you're maybe using more of a, of a, what's that fucking motion called? Pendulum. A pendulum motion, you know, and yeah. maybe when you're at your own studio when you're comfortable you kind of don't do that right you kind of just whip out more you well, know? yeah because so, you're like so comfortable here yeah, yeah yeah so i think when i was uh, that second time i went over there to angelo's studio um elysian yeah i was doing a lot more of a pendulum motion and shit like that and i slowed down a lot and i just learned things about myself you know maybe because i was just i wanted to put out good work for these guys you know i didn't want to want them to think that i don't know a piece of shit or something, you know? No, 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 not that. No, no, that, no, know, no, but, no, yeah. But, you know, so I think, you know, I, I think it just, like, again, right, it just corrects me to, like, slow down and see things in a different manner, right? Just like I said, when I come down, I see people still working and they've right. been working for hours and it corrects me to slow down and not feel anxious to finish or something like that. When I do go to a new, like, Studio. shop or a new yeah. environment, yeah, you know, um, same thing. I'm always learning something about myself and... Yeah, maybe I should probably do the pendulum motion, this whole tattoo, and see how it looks. Or maybe I should do this tattoo with all, like, with just a three-round liner, you know, and see how I feel about that, right? To be disciplined and to stick to the way you're going to apply something all the way through thoroughly and see what results you get. And that's what, I feel that's what I did over there at, uh, in Sacramento. You did. And you I did. fucked with the heavy. I, I really, I, I learned a lot for myself, you know? Because when you came over and showed it to me, I was like... And not just that, you know, ask, asking, asking like Angelo and, you know, yeah. like CEO for help and shit like that, too, about placement and sizing and all that you, stuff. You I remember you did smoke it like and everything. three or four times, too. I did, yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I wasn't going to either, right, because, again, I'm an introvert, you know, and, and I'm, I'm very, I get very nervous about things like that. But, again, dog, like, I feel right, like what, you're doing better now, of course, though. And I was gonna, well, it's because you feel like, for yeah, sure, right, like, sure you know, like, better. just bringing me out of my comfort zone. And I'm sure you bring a lot of people out of their comfort zones, too, right, like, with Val, like, drawing, you know, like, you being around us more often and shit like that. This food creating, like, videotaping and shit like that with us, you know, and Dan, with everything I mean, just everyone, bro. Like, you know, like, so, yeah, dog. Like, you should definitely take advantage of things like that when the help is in front of you, you know? Yeah, take for advantage sure. of it in a beautiful manner, dog. And so I try to do that. Yeah. I try to take as much information as I can from you as I can, as, yeah, as much as I can, you know? Yeah, because um, um, I think for sure Sacramento definitely did that. I mean, I think both of us in general, while we were tattooing out there, you know, I think that's super cool because we do travel a lot, you know? I think, um, and there's a lot of things that we both like to do. So when we do travel, we try to utilize as much as, like, as that as possible. Like using people, using, asking for advice or yeah, learning different techniques and stuff. So yeah. no, and I have, yeah, I felt really good after I asked them too, bro. Like, I definitely needed that shit. For sure. I know because when you asked Angelo for advice and see, I was like, uh, but I, but for me it was like, damn, that's dope. And like, I learned a lot too. You know, like sometimes less is more. You know, and I, I would have never even thought of shit like that, right? Because yeah. I was trying to put smoke into Ian's, on Ian's leg and shit like that, and Angel's like, you should probably blow it up, and you probably don't need the smoke, right? Because it'll yeah. take away from the main subject uh, and shit like cool. that. You know, I was like, damn, dog, like I love that perspective, and I brought that shit back home with me. Yeah. You know, and like sometimes less is more. You know, like and fuck, you, yeah. know, you don't always have to be so intricate or and all that shit. You know, so shout out my homies, uh, right. Elysian, Angelo, Seal, yeah, Marcos. Jose, Carlitos, Corey. Yeah, they have most, a fucking awesome ass. They're a fucking bro. Team, team. Dog, dog, when we went when we went to Sacramento, cool stuff, fuck, I was I was like I think I was mo- cuz we went there last year. Yeah, we did. The experience we had at Elysian last year compared to this time we recently went is way different. Yeah, way different for way sure. Way different, bro. Like, yeah, Ali we, I fuck with well, I'm going we're going back to Elysian. I, I am. He won't be going. He's going to Chicago. Yeah, I'll Chicago. But I'll be in I'll be at Elysian next month. And um yeah, I, I really fuck with their studio. Um it, they have a lot of great artists there, man, and like they're all so helpful, they're kind, you know, they're willing to like show you things. You know what's important too that they have too? Um, is uh what do you talk about? Um like when we kick it outside of the shop, you know? 
Oh, camaraderie. Yeah, they have camaraderie. They do have and that's camaraderie. Just, I think that's very important too, right? Yeah, so of like, course. That's, that creates yeah. like great fucking vibes. Well, so why do you think we go in and out of the shop, you know? And that's what we do at the gallery, right? Yeah. We'll try to do like, you we'll know, yeah. We'll uh, eat. Yeah, a lot of times at the get. Oh, for sure, we like to eat. For sure, we eat. <laughs> we uh, there's like times where like not not as of as of late, I haven't been doing it. I don't know why. I think I just have been so busy. But usually, I will set up like dinners and like we'll, we used to go bowling or talk. At the golf. very least, you know, for like Thanksgiving, yeah. Christmas, but we, we'll have, like, you know, Christmas we should probably dinners, do something. Dinners, we should probably do something. Everybody at the gallery, karaoke or some shit, you know. Yeah, we should do that. We'll do it too. We haven't done anything in a while. No, we haven't. Damn, it's fucked up. Well, I mean, last time we had a fucking dinner, dinner here, piece it was of shit. Dick. We had dinner like fucking <laughs> two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we for sure should do something though. But yeah, sure. typically we do like to build camaraderie. You know, um, I think that's very important. Yeah, for sure, because it's not only just like tattooing here at the gallery. Like we also hang out outside of the studio, and I think that's very, very important. Super you know? important. Yeah, everybody like you know, there's certain people like like the girls. They hang out with each other and they do their thing, and the fellas or whatever the case is. Or, but I definitely want to do a thing where we all get together. You know, go to dinner because we haven't had a big like studio dinner and you know, we haven't had that since 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 val came since dan danny yeah david david we haven't had that g oh i think last time we went with g oh well, g went but to that was a long time you went with this in new orleans that was no, it we went, we went bowling too right what we Gio? We was over there where do we go we went oh yeah, yeah we did go with g yeah we got we, we gotta bring on fonzo but yeah we for sure set that up yeah no we should um but let's talk about which well i was really really excited and happy for you was you did that video for Angelo on his YouTube, dog. Oh yeah, even that shit was. Nervous. That shit was cool, cause you're like super. You are very, you're very introvert, but I was, I was really proud of you, bro, because you really stepped out of your comfort zone and did that video for him, which he's gonna release it soon. I'm, I'm imagining, but that shit was really dope, bro. Thanks, like, dude. like seeing you do that and. Um, you know, go out of your comfort zone, speak in front of a camera and talk about how you applied your tones and stuff like that. You, you did a great job, bro. You know, yeah, I feel nah, yeah, it was, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just always nerve wracking, you know, but again, even if it's not the best or something like that, I mean, cause like when you talk and shit, that shit just sounds natural and shit. When you talk to the camera, even though you're sweating right now a little bit. For <laughs> reason, but, what the fuck? No, because all these goddamn yeah, lights. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, 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 sure. And, whatever, um, bitch. no, but yeah, nah, uh. <laughs> I still felt I was, I mean, when I did my video, dog, I was like, yeah, it's just cool, right? Like, I explained myself thoroughly-ish and then whatever. And then you come in, fool, and, like, the way you dab up Angelo, I'll fucking feed him, bro. Oh. And, like, and then, the, and then the way we were just talking, bro, like, it's just very, I definitely have a lot to work on, you know? But nonetheless, yeah, I appreciate it, dog. Like, yeah, um, yeah, stepping out of your comfort zone, you know, and just, it's okay, like, to... And you're working on that now, though. You're here on the no, podcast. For sure, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? No, I you're here live with the people. Honestly, for sure. You know, like all these motherfuckers in here, whoever else is in here, you know. But I think for sure, like, there is one cool thing where, you know, coming to the gallery, you know, when I, when I came here and I was like, all right, you know, like, I need to try to find a way to help Julius. Because as we mentioned earlier, right, when I came to the gallery, I saw, like, this potential of, like, wow, like, the gallery could be this thing, Right. And, and and it's natural because you say you, you didn't look at it that way because you're not a businessman. I thought we're going to do certain things to really elevate this place. So we started doing the the drinks and the snacks. And then we started. How, the we even like in, how we even like open the door? To or we open the door. Hey, we welcome to the. the yeah, exactly yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the gallery, guys. Did you even finish about like how you fucking how that should happen with you over there in Santa Monica? And like what happened with that with your client that you had and then Tinkerbell? Oh no, I don't know if I did. Oh, I, I, yeah, well, I fin I finished it. I, you know what? Like the schmeal with that, like what happened? Yeah, yeah. I, did, I tell you, right? I told you what happened. Oh, you told me what happened. The, yeah. So yeah. So speaking of that, after I tattooed that guy, uh, my homie Eric, I walked up to the owner and I remember telling the owner like, "Hey, you know, and this is about respect too, right?" I went to the owner and I was like, "Hey, man, like, um, uh, thank you for the opportunity to tattoo here, but I've received another, um, another opportunity." by a friend to tattoo at a, at a penthouse in Los Angeles. And I don't know anybody here, but I would rather tattoo with my friends. No offense, but thank you for the opportunity. And you know what he did? He was like, uh, he said something, something, something. He's like, all right, it's cool, man. Don't worry about it. It's great. I hope everything works out for you. And then he said, I said, oh, how much do I owe you? Because it was like 40% or like 50%. Yeah. And I was like, he's like, don't worry about it. You don't owe me anything. And I was like, mm, no, well, no, head, fuck no. that. Yeah. I was like, nah, dog. I told you that I would, I would pay you. What's the percentage? And then he's like, it's forty. And I was like, damn, this motherfucker was testing me. And after he, after I paid him, 
He goes, I fuck with you, Rocky. You're welcome here anytime. And I was like, I knew it. You were testing me. That's fucking right. That's fucking yeah. dope that you fucking paid him though, right? Like, I did, that, I that did. Because like, that, that, that was my word. Either, you know, that, yeah, it's fucking yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's my word. That's you do it, dog. And it, yeah, so the, the, tattoo sh- the tattoo studio is called... um. Damn. I don't even know. The artist's name is Johnny Ocean. It was a walk-in shop. It was a walk-in shop. Yeah, in Santa Monica. Johnny Ocean? His name is Johnny Ocean. I'm not going to tag him in this, but yeah. Nah, yeah. Um, I don't know what his studio was called, but it was like some. Did you have a big following? I think. I don't know. But, it's man, it, it, it was not my vibe, though, for sure. Yeah. Fuck no. It, it, it was just, it was crazy. I was like, oh, this ain't my vibe. Like, get the fuck out of here. Damn. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so that's, yeah. and after that, I started tattooing at the gallery. And then now I've been here for uh, three years? Well, like, almost Four three. Three years. No, April this year will be my third year. Third year at the gallery. So we're gonna do like the regular thing, like dinner. dinner we'll have dinner. Shit, yeah. yeah. We'll fuck up some shit. You know what I mean? Like a nice steakhouse or something. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Man, like bow or something. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But um, I don't know anything else you want to talk about. What up, Germany? Oh. Oh. Chill. Oh shit! You chill. <laughs> um. All right, so one more. So let's see if any. There's a question in here. Do it more often. We need real. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. Um, I don't know anything else you want to talk about. Maybe uh, maybe you want to give some advice to people about as far as like, you know, pursuing their dreams or anything in general that you want to say. Maybe let's say, let's say there's a kid out there right now that wants to be you and they just started tattooing. What would you tell that kid? Or what would Julius tell young Julius? That's even better. I mean, I think, I think the best advice anyone can give you and any, the best advice anyone can take is to not fucking quit. Like, just don't fucking quit. If you love something so much, don't quit, right? Um, but other than that, I mean, take advantage of, like, these beautiful people that you come across, right? Like, Rocky and shit, um, giving everyone advice and stuff like that, right? Making these podcasts, going live, um, you know, just all that stuff. To take advantage of your surroundings. Take advantage of the people that are around you. Um, and not in, like, a bad manner, right? But take advantage of them in a beautiful way, like, um, as long as you can. Because a lot of people don't have those kind of opportunities, you know? And and especially, like, new new artists, like, coming up today or something like that, right? Like, thank goodness y'all have, like, so many types of platforms and websites where you can get information on how to <laughs> tattoo and shit, dog. That shit's... <coughs> if anything, it should be easier for you guys to do it now, right? So there really, truly can be no excuse, right? As right, opposed to, like, back then, dog, like, all I had was MySpace. And there was no shit like that. There were just, like these old ass tattoo magazines that were like faded as fuck and you know, like there was no information on like how to apply shit, you know? And not too many people doing videos like the way you do to help people out with subscriptions and all that stuff, dog like so. But nonetheless, um, whatever it is you're trying to do, even if it's not part of tattooing, right? If it's something that you're passionate anything about. Anything in general. Anything in general, yeah. right? Just don't fucking quit, you know? Times are tough for everyone. Um, things aren't easy and good things don't come easy. Um, and that'd be, that's for sure be, I mean, imagine if I quit, I wouldn't be here. So persistence and don't quit. Don't quit, I think is like the main important part. Just don't fucking quit. Don't yeah, be a fucking sure. quitter. <laughs> I fucking sure. hate that shit. You guys have any questions? You don't have to, oh. Yeah. What would you say to someone, to an So the question is, what would you ha- what would you say to an artist who's young in the game and wants to get out of the comfort zone and move to the next level? Surround surroundings for sure, right? So I think the answer to that question is he's he's asking is, yeah. what advice would you give to an, a younger artist who wants to get out of the comfort zone? And the only way to get out of your comfort zone is to be out of your surroundings, right? To to seek new surroundings. Yeah, and yeah, and to be transparent with yourself, right? Like, no, that's you know, yeah. like. Yeah. Maybe see what other artists are doing differently than you are. You know, if you if you can reach out to them, you know you should. Um, even if you're even if they don't reply to you or whatever, you know, and even if you feel like foolish or some shit if they don't reply to you, you know, like some of these dudes are busy and they don't like intentionally mean to not reply to you or something like that, right? But yeah, um, if you are scared of anything, right? Like fucking who cares? Just fucking do. Right? Just do it. You know, like what what what. What would happen to you if you tried something and it didn't like work out, right? Like you'll still be in the same place you were at before. You know, if anything, it'll probably like help you get more comfortable with, I guess, rejection or something like that, right? Because, like, something has to hit, you know, eventually and shit like that. But, yeah, I, I would say also, yeah, just reach out and then ask them about their process and 
when you do go to like different shops and shit like that, right? Or if you're going to like different environments and stuff like that, see the way they work, right? And if you do want to le- level up, like, how does this shop function different? How does this team function different than the shop that I'm at? You know, why haven't I like progressed so much? Is it because of me? Is it because I'm not trying hard enough? Is it because of the people that I'm with? You yeah. know, like what makes this shop different? Just and just um, be transparent with yourself and um, what's it called? What? I don't know. Maybe I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I don't know. I'm not. I don't you have yeah. Saying. You're on a very good road, huh? Yeah, 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 that too. Don't get discouraged for don't sure. Discouraged. I, I think definitely like that. That what he's saying Just is important. Main, see the main differences, I guess. See yeah. the main differences, like from wh- whatever your environment you're at to other environments that you go visit. You know, and why does their shop function different, or you know, and yeah, use those to I guess adjust where you're at. You know, and if you have to leave some shit, leave it behind. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Change is good. Change happens every day, and. um You'll be better for it for sure. Yeah. So shout out Oscar B. Actually, so Oscar B. He's a, he's a, I met him once. Um, I did like a little mini seminar for my homie George Seven One Four Official. Sorry. Shout out my homie Seven One Four Official. And shout out Oscar B. Tattoos. So Oscar B. Underscore Tattoos. He says also putting ego aside. A lot of artists get their ego hurt when others try to break their bad habits in order for them to grow, and they start calling it oh, hating, yeah. which is so true. That is true. Yeah, I think you can't grow if you have an ego. If, if you if you want to grow, you better throw that shit aside because, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't think it mattered. Like, I guess, ego, yes. Ego like, is one word, right? But you have to be open to constructive criticism, yeah, right? Yeah, and that's why we say CC. that a lot, right? Yeah, when yeah, when we we're do. looking for an artist, like, you have oh, to be open right. to constructive criticism. You know, yeah. if you are open to constructive criticism... I feel like that has like it goes hand in hand with ego, you know. So if you're open to us talking to you about things that we think are bad habits and stuff like that, like you're already ahead of the game, you know. Like, cause yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly that. So we had another artist here, um, and you know he developed some bad habits with his other place of, of work, yeah. and we tried to help him break those bad habits because. You know, for him, this is the right way to do things, right? He was taught this way, and he can't believe that I've been taught wrong for X amount of time. But we're telling him, like, nah, bro, like, yeah, this is this. Is it. Not that there's a right or a wrong way, but this is there's a there's a better way, right? Like, let let my experience and his experience guide you in the right way, so that maybe you don't keep doing these things this way, right? Or you're asking yourself, why does my tattoos look different than theirs? Because well. You got to be open to the criticism, you know what I mean? Yeah, more efficient for sure. I mean, yeah. yeah, definitely more efficient. And that and that's one thing, right? Like efficiency is one thing, but there are some artists who just have like bad habits in general that they just can't kick, you know, and it has nothing to do with even like the application or anything like that. It just probably just them as a person. You know? Yeah, yeah, and, for and, sure. And if they can't, I don't know if they can't change then like it's unfortunate, but again, like I, it's not that we're trying to be like dicks or anything like that, but there's a standard. There has to be a standard, you yeah. know? Things have to function in a certain manner, like, for things to feel as comfortable. I mean, your your work environment has to be as comfortable as, fuck, just as you want to be at your house, you know? I think everything has to be in order, you know? Like, I think what makes, like, a good tattoo artist and a good tattoo is to have everything in order, right? To have everything clean, to have, like, your station where it needs to be, not to have, be all, like, unorganized and everything, because if everything yeah. is unorganized, you'll probably, like, work on your tattoo in that kind of same manner, you know? Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah I, I've noticed that, like, I'm a very, like, super OCD fucking guy. I'm not super OCD, but yeah. I am, I, think, like, I am. Having everything in this, like, 180 degrees, like, is yeah. very, you need to have your iPad here if you're looking at a, at a design, to have your iPad here, to have your um, tattoo station here, to have your subject here, right? Like, I'm not going to fucking break my back and be like, oh, ink, and then, like, look at the ink back here and, like, the iPad back here. Like, that's yeah. ridiculous. You know, like, if you can, if you do have the space for it, yeah, just try to have everything, like, in your... Efficient. Yeah, efficiency for sure. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. For sure. Any question? Any other question? No. No. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Well, that's that's a great question. So the so the question is, the question is, if uh, do you feel like you have to be a certain level to own a studio, or do you feel like maybe your work starts to impact, 
or it, it, your your work isn't growing because you're so busy taking care of a business, running a business, right? Is that your question? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much it. Yeah. Like if it affects my work, that I'm managing other people. Is it harder for you to grow knowing that you have eight other artists here? Is it harder for me to grow? Um, uh, but better yet, the question: Do you focus on other artists that, so much that it takes away your attention from what you need to do with your personal life or your tattoo work? No, no, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think it takes away from like you know, like my tattoos or anything like that. But definitely comes with its stresses, you know. Especially when you first start like a team like that, you know. And again, like this is this was my first time like when I opened up the gallery three years ago. But I think it was into like what like a year after or maybe like around six, seven months where I started to have some people here with me and shit like that. Just to talk to these foods, right? Like I didn't know how to talk to them. Like I wasn't like a dick or anything like that, but right to like talk to people in a certain manner. Um and to not be weird about it, you know. Like I think one thing is like, you know, I, I know a lot of people can be very nice and shit like that, right? So I had to come with come up with a way to when there was an issue or something that I felt could change or isn't working out. I needed to find a way to speak to whatever artist that would be or whatever it would pertain to um, in a manner where I don't come off as like I'm fucking nervous or some shit like that, you know, where I spend too much time thinking about it and then the words come out fucking weird or misconstrued or some shit like that, right? So I think the way I worked with that is as soon as like some, I knew something like needed to change or something was off or something like that, as soon as it would come to my mind, I would like immediately tell the person right away. And I feel it just came off more organically that way, like just like I'm talking to anybody, you know, but... Um, so that's kind of, kind of how I gauged it, but nah, it definitely wouldn't, it definitely didn't affect like my work or anything. I mean, sometimes, but very, very rarely. And when I say sometimes too, is cause there were some artists too that they just couldn't break like old habits, you know? And, 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 um, I'd bring these like issues up to them a couple times and, and I thought it was very nice, you know, and very lenient with shit like that for a while, you know. I, I just believe in, like, I don't know, a lot of chances, I guess, you know, and stuff like that. But it, it would just would never change. And sometimes I would get mad, too, you know. I would never, like, fucking raise my voice or anything like that. But, yeah, sometimes it fucks, like, sometimes it would fuck with my day or something like that, you know. But I never, and that's another thing we talk about here, too, right, is, like, you know, everyone has their own issues at their house and shit like that, right. And I think it's very important to leave that shit at the door when you come in here, you know, because, like, that shit fucks with the energy around here too, you know? And nobody wants, like, somebody here fucking being grumpy or fucking bitching or some shit like that, you know? Like, we all have our own problems, you know? Like, we all, we all know, yeah. like, but you can leave that shit at the door, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I don't, think, I, don't think it, I don't think it affected, like, my... It doesn't affect my tattoos. Or now, do you think running a, running a studio like this has it helped you grow as a person? Oh, 100%. Nah, fuck yeah, for sure. A thousand percent. Okay, um, cool. Definitely makes me more... Um, open to talking to people and being more conversive and and just like I said like I just keep being repetitive but you know just being open to new things and trying new things out mm -hmm. and and now that the way it is right now now that we have the team the way it is and shit like that um it opens my eyes to how things can be you know with like hard work determination and like the right mm, the right not goals but the right headspace you want everyone to be in, you know, and and everyone fucking does a beautiful job doing that here, you know, and I'm yeah. fucking so thankful to have everyone here, you know, like I learned a lot from everyone here, you know, and having them as a team too, and just how they all get along with each other because we're all fucking different, like everyone's so like no one's, you know, like way different from Helen and Helen way different from Rocky, you know, like we're all way different, but I love how we can all fucking vibe with each other still, like we all find this common ground to like yeah, fucking do, have a yeah, great yeah, time yeah. with each other. Yeah. We'll be laughing at each other. We'll be cussing from upstairs downstairs, <laughs> dog, and like even our clients tell us like yeah. they fuck with us, you know. So it's I, a very I feel, particular. I feel, yeah, I feel yeah. we're doing something right, you know. <laughs> For sure. Straight up. A uh, blue blue jay art. They said very informative. He's the one that hit nice. us up. Yeah, he's the one who hit us up. Um. But yeah, so I mean, yeah, no, anything else? No. Yeah. Um, How does she? She yeah, raise so her So the question is, what do you want to work on for our tattoo? What do, do you see yourself like in the like? Well, let's say like in a year. Yeah, in a year. I guess right. Do you, do you see yourself in a year? Where do you see yourself in a year? Oh, what with it, with with tattooing? Okay. Uh, well, so what's one thing I want to accomplish in the next year with tattooing? Um, with tattooing, 
I would. I mean, I definitely want to do more black and gray. That's as far as pertaining to tattooing, not business like tattooing. I for sure want to do more black and gray. Um, I want to do more black and gray with lettering. I want to do like some composition. You know, it's it's so cool. Like <laughs> when I first started tattooing, I wanted to be this guy who does lettering, and that's cool. Like, but I still like doing black and gray, and I want to get more into black and gray. Um, I've done a couple of black and gray pieces. They're not great, but I do like them. I feel like I have potential in black and gray, so I want to do more black and gray work. So black and gray mixed with lettering, like a cool ass like portrait or like I don't know some kind of image, and then like some dope ass lettering underneath. You know, like. Some real yeah. sick shit like fuck Angel. Yeah. That'd be like fucking from, dope as fuck. Like Angel though. from Chicago. That's what you're from Black and Gray. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Like I want to do shit like him. Like his shit's fucking dope. But I want to do more Black and Gray for sure. Um, traveling more as far as like tattooing, I want to travel more. Uh, definitely do more Black and Gray. Travel. Um, help people more with tattooing. Like obviously not with the Black and Gray as much, but with lettering, I definitely want to help people with tattooing more. You know. I want to I want to be able to help somebody who's in need of it, and if I can help them, then yeah. So definitely do more black and gray as far as like black and gray and lettering, like composition, uh, travel more, uh, and help people. Yeah, that's what I want to do with tattooing. Like, and I think tattooing helps me do that. That's why I love tattooing so much because tattooing. You know, I talked about it before. Where like I, with with tattooing, I love my job so much because I can tattoo and at the same time help somebody. So if like Ian's over here and he wants to learn. It's so cool where I get a fucking tattoo. I, I can still do my job and help Ian at the same time. That's so like, fucking dope. That's like, that's like, like bad karma. It's like, it's like the no, coolest. Like, everybody out, you, know? you know, it's so crazy. It's like we're spoiled. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Like if I, if, you know, a lot of the times I reflect on this shit a lot. Like I'll wake up, like after I start like my third of the day, right? I'll wake up, I'll do that, and then I'll think to myself like, damn, like how crazy is this? Like this life that I've been blessed with, like this. Damn, such a fucking. You know, like it's sure. crazy. Yeah, and I think you're right. Like even so, yeah. In the future, I see myself traveling a lot more, too. I'd lo- I mean, traveling a lot more, too, doing a lot more conventions, guest spotting a lot more. Yeah. But going, making my way to Europe, you know, I think that's going to be my next goal for this year. That is, I mean, I am going to do it. I'm 1,000% going to do it. I'm going to hit Europe this year and go tattoo out there. Um, but what's so crazy is that, you know, there are, all these, there, are, there are all these blessings that I feel a lot of people don't, like, see that they have, you know. And I think one thing, I was just talking to, like, Helen and, and Val today about this, that, you know, like just being born, okay. Just like under, just knowing that you found what you love to do, I think is a blessing in itself, right? Because there are people our age and even older than us that never find something that they love, you know. And um, if you can find, if you find and understand that this is something you love, and not just tattooing, right? Like, let's just say you fucking bake cookies or whatever the fuck you do, you know. Like, if you find that's what you truly love, like that's such an accomplishment and a blessing in itself, right? So now you have something that you know you would want to do for the rest of your life. You know, some people just never find that, right? Some people are, are content with going, I don't know, doing other jobs or, you know, maybe getting a job every couple of years or something like that, right? So that's one blessing in itself. I think another blessing, like, once you find what you love doing that a lot of people don't think about is that, I mean, at least for me, one thing that I always think about is that I was born, like, in L.A., you know? I was born in L.A., and I could have been born anywhere else in the world, right? Um, and I feel, that's why I fucking hate quitters so fucking much, dog. Cause like, <laughs> I know it goes back to this, but it's just cause like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what they have to bitch about, you know? Like, you know, like my, my family like got it really, like my mom and dad worked really hard to get here, you know, from Mexico and shit like that. And they didn't have shit, you know, to like start with or anything like that, you know? So I know they worked their asses off to, you know, to give me like the opportunities that I have, you know? And for me to be a piece of shit and like not to see that as a blessing, you know, and to like roll with that dog, like, I think it's like a spit in their face, you know? So like. Like, that's why I don't like bitching, bro. Like, I don't like quitting, like, because there are people that have done a lot for you that I feel a lot of, like, people don't think about, you know? And, yeah, so that's another, you know? And so, that's so, yeah, I, I, there are too many ble- blessings in between all that shit, for sure. But, yeah. Yeah. What up, Angelo? I don't want to cut Julius off. That's what right, up, motherfucker? Off, yeah. Boy. What up, dog? Oh, shit. We got Angelo in the motherfucking building, you guys. Tat- right. Tattoo underscore Angelo. Salute. Dude, that was a beat. Did you see that shit that Jose posted? He did that, that, uh, that uh, I don't know what the fuck it's called. Damn, I'll fuck I did up. see it. I did see it. That shit was dope, yeah, bro. Fucking fuck yeah. Angelo. I'm going to be out there next month, dog. Right. Shit. That's my dog right there. Elite. I'm with you out there. 
I mean, yeah. Um, no one? My boy Angel right here. I don't know. Angel. I know Angel's for sure going. He's he's definitely going. That's right. Yeah. So uh, I, I think, yeah, I think Danny, no one wants to go. d is going to go. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I You're think so. Yeah, I got to I gotta talk oh, to Angelo. Be with us in Chicago. Yeah, I got to talk to Angelo because I, I told him about it, but I'm trying to figure out. Love, miss, we love and miss you too, my boy. Don't trip. We're going to be out there soon, dog. Yeah, for sure. We for sure going to be out there. Um, yeah, I don't. I think Gio said he wanted to roll, but I gotta. You know, these fools. I gotta get a for sure ahead account. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know how I get, bro. You know how I get. Yeah, I, I don't know. But um, anything else? No, no. no I think I we're know. good. Yeah. Oh, you do have a question. From tattooing. But for sure. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, definitely yeah. patience. For, um, honestly, I think what tattooing, which was what, which was what I was going to close out with, right, is I won't do the go too in debt, but I think tattooing has taught me um, to really, really believe in myself, for real. Like, I think that's what it's taught me. Yeah. I, I think, you know, it sounds crazy, but, yeah, man, like, tattooing has really taught me how to believe in myself you know because there's been times where i've been tried like yeah, and great. i almost quit remember dig i was telling this shit i was saying this shit last time on the last episode i don't know when the fuck it was remember you had i don't know if maybe you have a bad fucking memory, I have a fucking bad memory. but remember when I, was, I used to tattoo right here yeah yeah okay I remember. and i did a bernini jesus on that fool and it came out fucked up. It had all fucked up Raider eye. Remember the one with like the eye? And yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like oh, a fucking, yeah. it was like a square. It wasn't even a pat. Like it was all yeah, fucked up. Yeah. But all at that, style. yeah, I had just started tattooing at the gallery and I wanted to try black and gray. And man, I was so close to quitting tattooing. I was so close. I remember I went out to the, I went out to the balcony Chiefing, Man, remember? Yeah, you <laughs> dig. Remember Jeez, that shit? Yeah, remember. So it was you, George, Tony, Brian, Sheesh. bro. I sm- I this is when I used to smoke cigarettes a lot. For I, I swear to God, I smoked like ten cigarettes. Yeah. Fool. I was like boom, boom, <sighs> boom, boom, and then they were like, they were like, chill, fool. It's cool. It looks dope. I'm like, fuck, you know, it does it. Like, I know what the fuck I'm looking at, yeah. you know. And Don't were, do it, Rocky. Yeah, they were like, nah, it's cool. I'm like, I'm gonna jump off this ledge, Don't you know. It. I'm gonna end it all now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro, like, I, I I've been tried, dude, and I was like, fuck. And I remember walking in, like, just feeling super defeated, and I was gonna quit, and I didn't. You know, I didn't quit. It's like a whole long story behind it, but we won't get into that. I didn't quit. I kept going. I finished it. And that's when I really thought to myself, like, damn, like, tattooing, yeah, has helped me with, like, other things in life, how to be patient and be my own boss and do all this stuff and create cool relationships. But it's also taught me that if you really believe in yourself, you can accomplish anything. Sure, yeah. Like, what was the question? Is that is that if, like, it, what, what anything has tattooing, tattooing has taught you? Has taught you what, has taught, what it has taught you, yeah. And obviously patience is one of them, but what it has taught me is that fucking anything is achievable, you know? Yeah. And, and no matter what kind of, like, circumstance or situation you're in, you know, like, tattooing taught me that any fucking door, you can open any door you want. You can get and obtain anything you want, you know, because you fucking deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. I yeah. deserve it. Everybody deserves it, you know? And I feel like a lot of people don't tell each other this, often you know and i try to say this as much as i can whenever these kind of like topics do come up is that you deserve everything in the world like oh, you deserve fuck everything yeah, bro. More, you know and yes and what if and that's what tattooing i think is the most valuable thing that tattooing has taught me is that anything is achievable dog and like again i'm just so blessed to even have this it just trips me out still that like you know i walk in here and like i don't know i have the team and that we have and the view and all that shit you know so I didn't know tattooing can open doors for you like neither this. Neither did you know? I. Neither did I. I mean, uh, you get free haircuts. <laughs> 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 no, tattooing for sure has opened. Like, for sure. and, and I think the coolest, well, one of the coolest things about tattooing for me, you know, like me having the little bit of business background that I do have, I've understood like, okay, cool. Like, yes, I'm a tattoo artist, but I'm also like, damn, I can incorporate the business side of everything that I know and do other things. Like, for example, like, yes, I'm a tattoo artist, but now we started the podcast. Maybe that could be a new business venture or, you know, I could fucking, you know, I'm, I, I do lettering. So maybe I could create like my own, like do a collaboration and, everything and create markers right. or, or create, so e. you could create e. you could create whatever the fuck you want. So there's definitely outlets. Like, 
I don't think you should think of yourself just as a tattoo artist. You're you definitely think, not just a tattoo yeah, artist. Yeah, think of yourself like as a tattoo artist and a businessman or woman, you know? And, like, I think when you start focusing on that and you start understanding, like, damn, I am more than a tattoo artist, that's when you reach new heights. That's when, like, all right, new new level unlocked. When you like, start thinking of yourself in that matter. Oh, and yeah, that's a great bro. thing. That's oh, yeah. Because, like, I never see the gallery as, like, I never seen the gallery as this kind of, like, place where people would want to come and, like, visit, you know, or want to come from out of the country and come tattoo here you know like boy Bro. Those, right? like but i remember i talked to you about that and and um i love that like you like instill in my mind that i have to look at the gallery in a different kind of manner Absolutely. you know and maybe i don't see it in that kind of manner just because like i don't know dog i just didn't think like i didn't think it would be what it is you know and or anything like that you know and i know i have you to like Think a lot for that, like a yeah, lot. For, oh yeah, of course. You're but welcome, it's it's good to be reminded of things like that, right? To see things in a different light, and 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 that's and, and you, I'm glad you brought that up because that's important, right? Like you'll keep me in check on certain things, and I'll keep you in check on certain yeah, things. Like that's great, bro. I you know there was a time it happened like a couple months ago. You know, I, I pulled Julius aside and I said, "Hey, Papa, like, you know, I think I think you're kind of like yeah, that's you, you, yeah, you, yeah, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. Like you, you got to start seeing the gallery for what it is. Like the gallery isn't just a studio that you opened three years ago anymore. Like people know of the gallery. Like you got to start seeing it in these people's eyes and like you know start treating it in a different aspect. And he he has been doing that. Yeah, man. and yeah. So sure, I think sure. it's definitely a good idea. Like you know, I appreciate all that shit for sure. Yeah, yeah bro. You, you need those different perspectives, you know. And that's why I'll fucking take anything I can from anyone who wants to tell me something. You know, I'm not closed minded at all. I appreciate any information that I get. You know, as anybody should. You know, and if you're if you don't, if you feel you know everything, dog, like you're cool. fucking losing already, bro. Like it sucks for you. You know, not straight yeah. up, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> fuck? Yeah. Fuck. Um, anything else? Yeah. Oh, oh. So the so the question is, as an artist, would you be upset if somebody copied your tattoo design? Is upset too strong of a word? Uh, I don't. Know. I mean, well, is it is it because okay? if you're copying the style or whatever, or you're getting inspiration from a style? I think yeah. It's well, yeah, 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 yeah. Street, you know, the yeah. I think tattoo. if you're getting inspiration, is different. But like, if you copy, if you copy the exact thing, like. You know, for lettering, like if you copied every serif, every ascender, descender that I that I did, all the flourishes, I probably feel some type of way. But I mean, to be honest, you know what? Like I told you earlier, I'm like super unfazed and unbothered now. I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't even care. Like I, I'd be like, that's cool, bro. Like hell yeah. Like and at the end of the day, I know I did that. Like that's my style. Everyone know you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would know like that's rocking. Yeah, that's that's my style. You know, like and that's cool. Like not so. I mean. I don't know. It just depends, bro. Like, if 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 that day I come in the gallery and I'm chill and I'm like, yeah, I'm in a great mood. R and B's playing. I'm like, yeah, fuck <laughs> it, you know. But I come in here and I'm on some gangster shit playing Tupac. I'm like, but man, fuck that fool, <laughs> you know. But nah, it's, it's, not, it's not probably not gonna bother me. Nine times out of ten, it's probably not gonna bother me. It's, it'd be like cool, dog. Like you know, I know where you got it from. Just keep it G. Like I know where you got it from. That's it. Yeah. Would you yeah. be? I guess there's different variables to that. Yeah. Um, no, I want to go fuck. I don't, I don't know if I... I don't think... I don't know. I guess... It, it has happened to me, though. I George. Think, George showed me a picture that somebody... Oh, yeah. He's like, look, fool. And he showed me a Facebook picture. And I was like, dang. How'd that make you feel? But it was like young Rocky G. I was like, man, what the fuck? But then, like, older Rocky dope, G. Though. I'd probably be like, that's cool, dog. Like, <laughs> you know? Like, fuck yeah. it. You know? But, I mean... Yeah, I wouldn't give a fuck, but I can see, like, other people that probably yeah. would, right? Like, imagine if, like, you don't have, I don't know, if you work really hard and yeah. probably, like, your Instagram isn't yeah. popping the way you think it should, right? Me, and, yeah, see, and and life there's variables. Fair. And life isn't fair. You know, there are yeah. variables, 100%. And life isn't fair, right? So I know a lot of people get discouraged that, you know, maybe some artists, like, I don't know, grow faster or something like that. Don't, like, you know, just worry about yourself, right? 100%, you know, and, yeah. you know, just go at your own pace. But anyway, pertaining to these variables, if there's this artist that, I don't know, maybe has... Not so much of a following, right? But does dope work. And then there's another artist that has like a bigger following and they copy that person's work that isn't well known. And then they kind of get credit for that. I can see that. That's a problem. A pro yeah, maybe that'd be. Yeah, so there's be definitely problem. variables to that, I guess. Yeah. What was your question, Alfonso?
Opening a door for people. Oh yeah, fuck! I fucking I love G Baby dog. I love G Baby. It makes again. It makes me feel like I'm making the right environment. You know, I obviously feel like it saddens me in some type of way. You know, like well, because you know, like I fuck with them heavy. You know, those are my friends and shit like that. You know, and shit like that. But ne- I'll never in a sour manner or anything like that. I fucking love G Baby. I love anyone who prospers and shit like that. Right? Again, like I'm realistic. You know, I know everyone has their dreams and their goals and their ambitions and shit like that. Right? Like my thing isn't to like have anyone here forever. Right? But if I could have a team here for a long time or even for, I don't know, till whenever this fucking shit kicks rocks, like, that would be ideal, obviously, you know? But I understand people have their own dreams. Like, people want their own shit. They want their own studios. They want their own fucking aesthetic and everything like that, you know? Like, and I think that's beautiful. I think you should definitely do whatever you, you, you want to do and whatever your goals and dreams are. Um, but how does it make me feel? Yeah, I mean, I feel it's, what is it? It's like a bittersweet, bittersweet moment, sweet, you know? It's yeah. a bittersweet moment, right? Because I'm not going to be around them anymore, but they're not dead or anything like that. I can go visit them. GBB still, still comes around. Up, yeah, yeah. Still and everything together, like that. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I love it, bro. I fucking love it. Again, it just, it just lets me know that there's something right happening here when you have artists coming in here and like leveling up, you know? And... And I know there are a lot of shops out there with owners that are, get very sour about shit like that, dog. They get all fucking butt hurt and stuff like that. But you shouldn't, dog, like, because, you know, you don't own anyone and you, and you don't owe anyone anything, you know? If you're going to open doors for someone, if you're going to do something, like, good for someone, right, and help them out in whatever kind of manner, you should do it out of the kind of side of your heart and not do it because you expect something back in return or expect someone's loyalty, right? That's, like, I don't know, that's some, I don't know. That's not a right way of thinking, right? Definitely do everything, like, with the pure heart and and with the knowing that everyone has their own fucking goals, you know? Not everyone wants to fucking stay at someone else's, like, studio and shit like that, you know? I'm sure Rocky wants to open up. I know you mentioned this already, too, right? But, I mean, everyone does. I mean, I don't know. I know I wanted to, right? Like, I know I wanted to. And, but the reason I wanted to open up my own studio is because, like, I didn't... All the studios that I went to were just fucking... I don't know all of them, but there were a good amount of them that were fucking, you know, not what I thought it would be, you know, and it didn't make me feel comfortable. And I think you need to be in a comfortable environment to prosper and to blossom and to learn, you know, again, you could be like at a nice studio, right? Let's just say like we're here. Right. And we had a different team, right? Like if you had the right, the wrong people here, you're not going to like get anywhere, you know? So it truly matters with who you're tattooing with and not the environment or not what it looks like. You know, It could be the most nicest studio. It could be the most darkest and most cramped studio. It's who you surround yourself with, you know, yeah, for sure. A thousand percent. Anything yeah. else? Cool. Rocky G Insta. Oh, that's different. All right. Uh, I think, I don't know if that's anything. Uh, yeah, I think, that's, I think it. that's it. Yeah. yeah. So um, I guess we'll wrap it up. But I think in in order to like end this uh, podcast, like in a, I feel like in a very uh, passionate way. Positive. Note. Right. In a pa- passionate, but also positive. Right. Um, you know, You've heard my story. This is like the fifth episode now. I've talked about myself a little bit, and you know, you guys, you guys have all heard. You know, if you if you watch all these episodes up to now, that's cool. I fucking appreciate you guys. You know what? Before I go any further, before I do the whole like like, comment, subscribe, that shit was really cool. <laughs> that shit oh, was yeah, cool. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if you've seen yeah. it, but like yeah, in the video, you didn't see it. I did see it. Oh, yeah, I did good. fucking see it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we put like like, comment, subscribe. But we'll do that after before we end this. But anyways. Um, <laughs> If you've watched all these episodes from from the first one to the last one, uh, to, this re- one. to this one, I really appreciate it, man. Um, like I mentioned, guys, like the, the the podcast was really dumped on me by Alfonso, Alfonso's Blasted Network. Damn, trip. Yeah, it, it kind of just got dumped on me, and, and you know, we dropped the first episode, and it's been rolling. And you know, once again, I'm really appreciative of it. Like I never thought like my words would hold substance to people, even when I do them solo, and then when I feature guest artists. I've been, I I received this message this morning, um, you know, about like somebody putting their goals list on their screensaver and all this crazy shit. And like, I've been receiving a lot of messages and I never knew like the impact that this maybe could have. Um, Now, with that being said, you know, we've had Angelo on, we've had Bees on, and now we've had Julius on. And I feel like, You've heard all of these different stories and most of the stories have come from like really hard backgrounds or thinking they were going to be a tattoo artist or or them fucking people up in the beginning. But the one thing that all of these motherfuckers have in common is that they did not quit. Right. So, 
you know, oh shit, dragons here. What up, dragon? What's up, dragon? Um, you know, if there's one thing they all have, they all share a common denominator, and that they're not fucking quitters. So I think if you guys ask me or DM me like, what's the secret, Rocky? There is no fucking secret. Just don't fucking quit, right? I can re- yeah, I can reiterate that word and I can announce enunciate it in, in, in different ways, but just don't fucking quit, man. Like that's the only thing, right? To be resilient, be persistent, be dedicated, be motivated, be driven, whatever. You need to make sure you have these attributes. You need to share. You need to make sure you possess these qualities. That is the fucking secret to life, right? It's to not be a quitter, to keep going. You've heard my story. Now you've heard Julie's story. You know, tattooing with a fucking CD motor battery with a big pen and a guitar yeah. string, tattooing his homies, fucking up their legs. He used to be a security guard guarding a fucking empty parking lot. Fucking empty parking lot, bro. You know what I mean? So, fucking like, waste the life, but no, you know? but no, for real, right? Like, <laughs> <Straight up. laughs> like wasting his fuck. you're wasting your life. You're wasting no, your life, right? So, let that shit sink in, right? And understand that nothing ever comes easy, but I promise you that if you're fucking resilient, and you don't quit, like, I want you to heed these words, don't quit, be resilient, and I swear to God, everything will come, you will, you will get everything you want, everything you fucking deserve in life will come your way, if you do that, you know what I mean, so, if there's anything you take away from this whole fucking pot, every, every fucking episode leading up to this one, if there's one thing you're gonna take away is, don't be a fucking quitter, don't be a fucking quitter, yeah, don't be a quitter, damn, straight up, and, 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 Dream as much as you can, right? You fucking close your eyes, taste the dream, smell the dream, whatever the fuck you got to do. If you can dream it, I swear to God, you can achieve it. Because like I said, before I met Julius, I heard about a penthouse studio and I drove by and I wanted to tattoo here. And now I'm here three years later. Yeah. I said I wanted to be a lettering artist. Here I am now. Same thing with Julius. He wanted to be a, su- a successful tattoo artist. Here he is. So that's the one thing that we all have in common is yeah. to not be a quitter. Don't quit. Yeah. So don't be a fucking quitter. All right, guys. And make sure you fucking like, like, comment, and subscribe on oh, the that, fucking that channel. Right, cool. You know what I mean? Right, there you go. It's the fifth episode of Dry Wipe Chronicles. Got my boy, Julius, like I said. As I mentioned, Julius underscore Cordero. Rocky G underscore Inks. Thanks for tuning in, motherfuckers. Peace.